Thanks for jumping in to another podcast episode brought to you by Bad Tabletop Gaming and Arrow. Your host is Armin, guest starring Theo. Everybody, we're ready to talk about the Dark Angels. We have Theo here with me. And we're going to go through the book little by little and talk about what the Dark Angels changes, the new book, what they are, what they do, how they built them, and everything else we can. Um, Theo doesn't play Dark Angels, but he plays the arch nemesis, the Night Lords. Yeah. And I do not play Dark Angels yet in 30k, but I do have lots of models ready to be painted. So um, I'm very excited about it, very excited to talk about it. And then I know Theo's excited to talk about it as well because there's Night Lords in this book too. So we'll get to that. Okay, so starting with the Dark Angels. So we might not read everything. We might just kind of talk about some things and then hopefully you guys have a book that you can follow along. So the first things first is we're going to talk about the Legion of Studies Dark Angels rules. So there's a few change, like there's a little bit of changes here. Like they still have the rule where if they have the same weapon skill, they hit on threes. Right? They've right. kind of changed a couple of things. They have something called uh, Scions of the Hexa- Hexagrammaton. It, okay, just to interrupt, you know what this <laughs> reminds me of? The movie with Christian Bale. Um, I know which one you're talking about, but I can't remember. Uh, I what can't it's think called. of what its name was. He's a gunfighter. He's like a mathematical gunfighter, literally. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they're like the <laughs> clerics of the. Grammaton or hexagrammaton oh, or something like that. Why can't I think of? I'll think of the really name as we go. On. Yeah, somebody's gonna have to I know. know that one. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll remember. But yes, that's what it reminds me of. Anyways, so eligible models. So it says eligible models with the Legion of Studies Dark Angel special rule may select options from the Scions of the Hexagrammaton and Scions of the Hecatonistica. Did I say that right? I think you said that right. That's pretty good pronunciation. Yeah, it took me a few. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were reading it beforehand, trying, and I wasn't sure. So from now on, I'm not going to talk about the scions because it's just repeating the same word. We're going to talk about hexagrammaton and hecatonistica. I don't know okay? if I can say that one. That's okay. I'll say it. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the last rule is the isolate. Uh, no, inviolate. Inviolate and alone. Thank you. Models with the Dark Angel special rule may never benefit from leadership or leadership-related bonuses from any model that does not have Legion of Stardis, Dark Angels, or Sire of the Dark Angels, which is the Lion, of course. So, um, that makes sense. I don't know. I guess other Legions can. Like, it's kind of weird. Yeah. I, but it almost seems like that could be, like, a standard rule for... For all... Maybe it will be. Maybe it will when be. When we get to the Night Lords, maybe yeah, I have no. that, too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so, I mean... There's not really any changes here from before. No, like you're getting a couple. The... You're getting a couple new bullet points here, and then the mastery of the blade hasn't changed. Uh, basically, your sword weapons, you gain 0.5 weapon skill, sort of. Yeah. Right. Um, um, they don't really have a huge negative. Like some armies will have like negatives and stuff. This one doesn't have a huge negative from what from what I can tell. Not in your not in your Legion of Stardis special rule. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, mastery of the blade, all these things. Signs of the Hex, Grammaton, and Violet alone all kind of make them their own unique thing, just like just like Legion of Stardis Legion should do. That's right. Weapons of Old Night. Oh, you were already recording. Yes, yes, I was recording. <laughs> okay, sorry, I didn't realize. <laughs> okay. oh, you might want to start that over. <laughs> Weapons of Old Night. So, what has changed here? There's a couple of changes. So, um, yeah, there is some changes. I mean... The the other stuff is is regular. So anybody that has access to a power sword um, may take a Calibanite Warblade for ten points, or exchange it for free for a Calibanite Warblade. So just one exchange, thing: there. exchange a power sword. That's for right, free. for free. That's part of their basic equipment. So if that's they right. like Terminator squads already come with power swords. You know, swap that out for yeah. a Calibanite Warblade, which and is awesome because it's better. Like a it is. Warblade it's a, is just plus one strength. It's plus one strength power mm-hmm. sword, literally. So yeah. I mean. No brainer, and it's the same points cost. So, that's right. Yeah. So anybody, 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 anybody that has a power sword, instead you call it a Calibanite Warblade. Yeah, and it's plus one strength. It's an awesome weapon, and you're going to benefit from your mastery of the blade. That's right. Well, you would with a power sword, anyways. You would, right? But yes, um, the Calibanite, uh, the Tyrannic, um, 
Oh, you got lost there. So uh, yes, any I model did. Legion of Stardust Dark Angels uh, with access to plasma gun or twin link plasma gun uh, as part of their war gear. Yeah, may instead take may. a plasma repeater for 20 points or a plasma burner for 15 points. So a repeater, just quickly, is uh, they're both 12 inches. Repeater strength 6 AP2 gets hot salvo 2 3 twin linked. And a burner is strength 4 AP2 heavy D3 plus 1. Ignore cover plasma flame and plasma flames where you can reroll. Um, Overwatch to hit rolls. Okay, yeah. so um, I mean, I'm going through this quickly because I'm assuming you guys have the book. But so a couple of things about that. So 20 points for a plasma burner is pretty cool. I mean, a plasma gun is usually depending on what you're putting it on. Um, it's 15. It's 15 points. So yeah. for five extra points, you have um, a weapon that's not always as good, right? Like it's twin linked. Uh, salvo two three. So uh, no, that's the the. The oh yeah, sorry, the repeater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So salvo two three. So let's talk about salvo two three. So let's say you have a, a, a support squad, okay, and yeah. you want to give it these for a little bit of extra points. Well, if you move, you're only firing two shots at six yeah, inches. Yeah, it's the right? really short range that hurts it. That's right. Or you're firing three shots at twelve inches if you stand still. Yeah. Now that's not that good, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Where this weapon becomes extremely good is if you're putting it on your Outriders. So it's 20 points compared to 25 points um, on the Outriders pl Twin Link Plasma Guns. Okay, so okay. I had read somewhere, and uh, perhaps we can get some feedback and get some clarification on it, but I had read somewhere that uh, Twin Link Plasma Gun is not the same as Plasma Gun. You're right, but it says special rule with access to oh, plasma yeah. gun or it is it is gun. there yeah. in the wording. Okay, yeah. great, Excellent. yeah. So so I, I mean, thought that was kind of silly. Yes, it yeah. would have been right. So now you can upgrade your outriders with these plasma repeaters that are slightly cheaper. Um, yes, you don't have that option of going long range, but you're always firing three inches, mm -hmm. twelve inches. Or sorry, you're always firing twelve inches for three shots. Yeah, right. So if you get close, and it's twin link automatically. So if you're like outflanking with them. And you get close, and you fire three shots. Um, I mean, yeah, you lose a strength, but overall, a strength strength seven doesn't really weapon. hit any of those break points for like instant I mean, death. Some armor, anything. no, but like some armor, like you can sure. still hurt thirteen armor as yeah. opposed to now you can. not yeah. But I mean, if you're outflanking and you're hitting front tanks with thirteen armor, yeah. like you're doing something wrong. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like you need to be hitting. Or your opponent the side. is really savvy or about what you're I doing. Know, He's like, yeah. I'm. I'm pivoting all my front armor <laughs> yeah. to the back line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can just I can just see it. You're like backing up or like shimming sideways your whole tank line. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I like it. I like the options. It's great. Uh, plasma burners, on the other hand, are really really good. Uh, I mean, the the Dreadwing squad automatically gets it. Mm -hmm. um, but they're like now when you're talking about squads like your um, uh, what you might call it. Um, Support squad, right? Well, now for 15 points, the so same points as a plasma gun, yeah. you can give it a plasma burner. Yeah, it's shorter range, but if you're putting them in drop pods and vehicles that you can it is, disembark. When, you're, when you have a plasma gun, you're trying to get it into that rapid-fire 12-inch yeah. range anyway. That's right. You're right. Or or let's talk about like Zomortalis, right? Like you're yeah. going to be up close. It's a and, small table. And, yeah, so. and this weapon is two to four shots. Ignore cover, which is unreal. I mean, it's only strength four, but holy smokes. And it's not get hot. Yeah, that's probably like the that's basically like you lose the strength, but mm -hmm. you lose that get hot. So I think that's kind of where they it's a little bit safer for them to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I mean it's it's an awesome weapon, awesome yeah. weapon. I think, right? The plasma burner. So uh, I mean, I you'll definitely see them in my army. You'll see the driving squads, and you'll see like squads outfitted with the plasma burners for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll definitely be uh, be doing a support squad with with them. I mean, honestly, if you're doing some troop hunting, heavy troop hunting. Putting them on outriders is still good. When you right? when you have that much AP two coming out of your troops slot in your force organization yeah. chart, you've got a good list. That's right. Like you know you've got you've got some great options that you can take uh, to put into your army, and you know usually AP two is a little bit more rare. Well, you've got a unit that can put out forty AP two shots. <laughs> like that's right. That's pretty scary. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Um, special issue ammun. Oh, sorry, no, Praetor, I missed the yeah. Praetor one. Yeah. So, um, any any Praetor that ha can get a Power Fist can instead get a Tyrannic Greatsword. So let's talk about the Tyrannic Tyrannic Greatsword. Actually, 
Um, I'm I have mixed feelings about this weapon, and it didn't change. It's the same as before, right? Yeah. Um, plus two strength is awesome. Mm-hmm. AP three, melee melee two handed instant death. I think it's great minus the AP two. I feel though, if it I, was AP two, it would be too good. It would be way too good. That's and, right. You know, like I'm sure that's probably what a lot of people are feeling. Like they mm-hmm. probably would have liked to have access to a legion specific weapon that was AP two, like the Blood Angels God. That's right, right or something yeah. like that. And I to that I say. AP3, instant death, is going to be fantastic against your Mechanicum opponents, yep. your uh, Demons of the Ruin Storm yep. opponents, anything with like high toughness, uh, multiple wounds, that maybe just doesn't have that 2 plus armor save, this thing's still going to go to town. Yep. It's going to go to work. And you know what? It still has that instant death special rule. So even if you do get yourself into a challenge and you end up cutting one of those, uh, one of those wounds through... A Praetor's armor save, you're you're mm-hmm. laughing anyways, right? Because boom, that guy's dead, right there. And and at plus two strength, you're going to be putting a, a lot of wounds onto those uh, onto those characters, anyways. So, I mean, no, no, it doesn't have AP two, but if it did, it be if you put mm-hmm. it into like the the same ballpark as uh, the Divining Blades, That's and right. then you can't pay fifteen points for that weapon. You got to pay absolutely like, correct. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think if I'm out kidding, like let's talk about out kidding a Praetor. I still feel a Paragon Blade with Murder Strike plus one strength and AP two is more versatile. Um, I think I think you're paying more for a Paragon Blade. I think. 15, I, uh, I don't, 25 I don't points for that. Yeah, so you are paying more. But it is, I mean, there's other units that get it, get this weapon. So, I mean, we'll go through that because that's, that's really Yeah, nice. you can have this weapon on an entire squad. That's right. That's right. So, um, and then the last one here, no, uh, not the last one, more, sorry. Yeah. So, special, immu- special issue ammunition. So, station shells may be taken. Um, anybody that's equipped with a grenade launcher, twinling grenade launcher, missile launcher uh, at, for an additional five points. So, it doesn't say that it replaces the original missiles, right? No, it's additional. So additional. So I mean, type. for five points, it's nice. So it's I an mean, option. it's not crazy. Like if you look at, uh, if you look at actually um, the the stats, like it's frag is strength three. So uh, with this with the stasis weapon, you're not looking to cause wounds with it. That's right. What you're looking to do is hit your opponent. Because they have this stasis anomaly yeah, special so, rule. So the one thing that's weird, it says all models in a unit hit by one of more weapons with a special rule reduce their initiative to one. Um, so all you have to do is hit the unit, and then all the models our initiative are, are, um, yeah. are, are one until the end of the game turn. So this kind of is... The game turn is kind of weird, and we'll get to that because it appears a couple times. Yeah, so it, if I go first, it applies for technically two player turns. Correct. But if I'm going second... Then it only applies for my player turn. Yeah. So that's kind of weird. I feel like um, it probably should be maybe clarified something they could FAQ. Until it should they... only last for that player turn. Sure. Or maybe if they wanted to do it, they should have made it so that it's same across the board. Because this gives you a benefit to going first. Yeah. Right? Because, and we all know that there's a huge benefit to going first. So it should probably say until the beginning of your the controlling player's next turn. Or just one player turn. Or Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's kind of weird. Um, I could, don't know. Could use a fix. I, I, I think just maybe a clarification. Yes. But I don't know. It seems pretty clear. Like end of game turn. So it seems pretty clear. It's just weird with the way turns work in, in, in 30k or, or 40k I guess. Right. Um, and then uh, the last one is uh, molecular acid shells. So this one did change uh, for the worse. So it's the same thing. Dreadnoughts can get it or Dark Angels can get it. Um, so any heavy bolter or twin link heavy bolter, you can, rep- you can give it extra uh, ammunition for five points. So five points, strength five, AP four, flesh so, bane, heavy three. So basically the big change here is this used to be a D, D3 it's a, it was or D6 a D6 AP. roll That's for right. your AP value. Uh, and you, ro- you would roll for an entire squad and apply that dice roll to your, a- as your AP value. So well, it, 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 uh, it changed from that to flesh bane, so now you wound on two plus. Um, but I mean, before it, you had like a fifty percent chance to um, roll AP three or lower, and cut you know just cut down squads of uh, of uh, you know tactical marines or something like that, right? So anything in power armor, 
Uh, and it was, I mean, it was even pretty scary for Terminator armor too, because you right? got a thirty-three percent yeah. chance of, yeah. of rolling AP two or better. So I think so. There was a couple of things. There's another change too. Like it's flesh bane now. It used to be poison two plus. Oh, uh, okay. So I don't know how that really affects. There I might be some units. There's a that couple have... mechanical units. I wonder if mechanical units have um, immunity to flesh bane or poison. It. I think it is. I think it might be both, but uh, it's. It's um, it's probably like, it's probably because of that that they specified that it's no longer poison. It might be fleshbane. It could be like certain primarchs might have in their armor. I think Alpharius something like that. He's doesn't get affected by poison. So there's there's you probably have that sort of stuff. So Armin's just checking that right now, um, uh, is in terms of like what that does. But so there is a change in the in the uh, molecular acid shells for the Dark Angels. Probably a lot of people are going to be upset about that. Um, I think with the access to the extra pieces of war gear that you now have, finally, um, this it could have been. It, I think it was just a little bit too much. It was a little too strong, um, and this is probably a change for the better, in my opinion. Well, basically, it made you so you like this. Everybody ran sky hunters yeah. with heavy bolters, and that's all you needed. They, you armed it with melta bombs, you could charge vehicles, or you could just shoot anything off the board because you were wounding on twos no matter what, right? So I'm just looking at the Mechanicum Resilience. So it says successful wounds caused by attacks like poison or flesh pain must be re-rolled. Um, so that's really all it says. So, so it doesn't it, again, really change it. There is probably some unit yeah, out you're there right. that has I, some I know Alpharius has yeah. immunities to certain things. Or uh, what's his name? Uh, Mortarian, I think, does it too. But yeah, yeah. Either way, the weapons changed. It's only AP four now. But I, I did feel that it was a little too good before. Like it would just Thanks. rip apart certain squads if you got lucky, and it just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like with your access to your new plasma weapons, you're that's gonna right. Have, I don't. You're gonna have you, tons of AP two. Exactly, so. exactly. And I mean, and it's still great because it's just sheer amount of volume shots that you're going to wound majority of with. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Uh, we're just going to quickly go through the Hexagrammaton and uh, Hecatonistica. Um, <laughs> so there's like the, the different... So what I like about the Dark Angels is... And they and I feel like they did a pretty decent job of flushing it out. Is they talk about, you know, their first legion, they mm -hmm. used to have everything. And then future legions kind of were adapted to have specific roles where they kind of ran with the Emperor and they had to do everything. Right? Right. So they have these like Stormwing, Deathwing, Dreadwing, Ironwing, Firewing, and Ravenwing rules. I really wish I would see more of these in 40k too, because they have like Deathwing and Ravenwing, but yeah. I kind of want to see the rest because it's really cool. So like Stormwing... Well, the chapter Dark Angels is a fraction of the Legion Dark Angels. So that's fair. I mean, that's fair. lore-wise, you could look at it that way. Yep, it's really nice. I, I think it's really great that they fully fleshed out all six of these wings mm -hmm. for the Dark Angels fans out there. That's um, right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so Stormwing, basically. Um, so first. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's any model with a character subtype or independent character special rule can take a single option from the following list for 25 points. Um, a given model may only include uh, different scions of the hexagrammaton. Uh, in which case that unit gains the benefit of each individual signs of the hexagrammaton present within its ranks. Um, so yeah, then we're then we're getting into like the different signs. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And then no model may have more than one. Correct. Yeah. That's right. So you have the Stormwing. Um, uh, so basically, most of them are, are all models in the unit uh, that's joined or is part of this uh, scion, right? So Stormwing is ballistic skill shots of. Uh, you hit on twos, so ballistic kill two, sorry, snap for snapshots. Yep. Um, Deathwing, uh, model with this rule, so only model, not a unit, may reroll first failed to hit roll of any phase while engaged in a challenge. So it's going to be a character or yep. uh, independent character, right? And that's really handy. That's right. Yes. Yes, it is. I mean, um, that would be in addition to like a master crafted reroll as well. Well, you can only reroll a dice once. You can. Right. But your first failed uh, first failed to hit, you would reroll from your sign of the Deathwing special. Oh, yeah. And then yeah, if you had, had a second, second one, one yeah, that's fair. you could reroll from your that's master fair. crafted. 
Um, the death, the Dreadwing is a really interesting one. So you may choose to move four inches through difficult terrain rather than rolling and may reroll failed dangerous terrain tests. So this was interesting. Like four inches isn't actually that far. Um, but when you consider like some critical rolls, like at the end of the game. Yeah. Sometimes you roll you, like, you two. know that you just need three or four and to you, make it. And you don't want to roll that just, one. Or yeah, two. yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, it's nice that it's four, you know, it's kind of like above average, right? That's right. It may reroll failed dangerous terrain tests. That's right. It is above average. Yeah. Uh, Iron Wing. So, uh, when rolling on a vehicle damage table, when you have one of these rules, you treat all crew shaken as crew stunned. So, it's good, right? Because you stop the other vehicles from moving when you yeah. when you do have this. Uh, flyers get locked and may crash, right? So. Yep. That's that's good. It, it's it's a good rule. It's it, not it's nothing. not crazy applicable. It's but not nothing. That's right. But it's not yeah. it's not crazy overpowered either. Yeah. Uh, Firewing. So a model with the special u rules and all uh, models in the unit gain hatred characters. So this one's really interesting because hatred, as per the FAQ, uh, characters. If you have a character in your unit, it transfers to the whole unit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because right? the Raven Guard had that whole issue. Uh, and they FEQ'd that and clarified. That's right. Yeah, so, so you have a character attached to the unit, which uh, happens a lot. <laughs> well, you always have a character. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, you have a sergeant. You have a character. So as long as that character is alive, yeah. right, like, you gain hatred. So that that's a really good rule. I feel this one's really, really good, which kind of makes sense because the Fire Wing are meant to kill things with characters yeah. or characters themselves, right? So, yeah. Um, and then Raven Wing. So this is the one that everybody loves. So, uh... The model and unit may reroll run, fall back, or thrust distances. This is really weird. What is thrust? Yeah, I've I haven't heard of a thrust. Yeah, distance I've never before. actually. I've been reading it everywhere, and thrust doesn't actually exist. I I read it. Do and they I mean thought, turbo boost? Maybe I thought maybe it'll it's something new no, that's in one of no, the units. I, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it either. So yeah. I think they mean turbo boost, perhaps. But what else could they mean? So yeah. run, fall back. Um, if maybe the hit and run rule could be thrust, but no, no I don't think so. I don't know. It, it maybe if you guys have come across that one, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Um, I think, I think it's turbo boost because that's the only thing that makes sense. But run, fall um, back. Yeah, that's weird. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. don't know. Uh, so there well, is. But see, but this is the other thing that's weird too. Well, it might, okay, so it must be turbo boost because if you look, like most Ravenwing will be mounted, right? So they can't run. They turbo boost instead. Right. Would, uh, see, but the, the, you go back. But you don't reroll, though. No, no, but see, you don't reroll turbo boost. Sorry. It can't be turbo boost because you don't roll for turbo boost. Yeah, it's a So what it's the hell is thrust? Number. I don't know. I'm really not sure. Consolidation, maybe? Or... It could be something that they... Will uh, introduce later? Or had originally intended to introduce and, like, went and back then and didn't do it. Out. Okay, so please... Yeah. message us guys yeah. and tell me what the hell a thrust is because yeah. I don't freaking know okay um, so moving on to Hecatonistica so just oh. really quickly there yeah. is a designer's note and it uh, is basically saying um, their their intention is that you're um, you're picking these scions on your models when you're building and painting them and that they should be represented on your right yes on yes. your model so you're, your so you're not coming up to a, a battle and you're like Decide. looking at the opponent and you're like, yeah, I'm actually Firewing instead of Dreadwing or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And I mean, and they have lots of paint schemes. It's really cool. Like the one beautiful part about the Dark Angels is that you could literally pick an army and build six different armies technically, right? And they would all do different things. So they are giving you that option. Um with these different scions, it gives you the ability to become highly specialized at doing something. That's right. And it, it kind of fits when, with like how the Dark Angels were That's as right. a legion. That's right. So, um, okay. So, Hecatonistica. So, here, uh, any model independent character may take a single option from the following for 25 points. Okay. So, you've got the Augurs of Weakness. So when you're rolling against armor with 11 or more, uh, with a vehicle uh, 11 or more on the facing targeted. Okay. A model with uh, the special rule adds plus one strength. 
Um, so I guess if you're hitting the back armor, you don't get you don't the plus get one. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, it's easier. So 10 and 11 are the same, basically, in that case. And then everything's minus one, right? So um, not bad, right? Uh, Icon of Resolve. So the model gains plus one attack on any turn, which it or a unit is part of is charged by one or more enemy units. So plus one attack isn't bad. Um, Guardians of Sanctity, uh, when you're using Deny the Witch. So just quickly on that icon of resolve it they didn't say that you gain counter attack they gave it this other rule that's right this model gains plus one attack on any turn which it or unit it is part of is charged by one or more enemy units which means that you could be locked in combat already and counter attack you wouldn't gain that attack bonus that's right right whereas this you would still yeah. get that or if you attack. have counter attack you would get two yeah 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 right so um it, it, it's pretty good it's definitely not a bad bad rule um the sanctity is about denying the witch so you roll an additional d6 and you discard the lowest result uh before determining if the roll succeeds or fails which is really good um the model uh the next one is a set of kings so you may re-roll to hit rolls of one when engaged in combat or in the challenge with any model with a weapon skill of five or higher so this one's kind of weird because it says when engaged in combat or in a challenge if you're uh all challenges are combat, but not all combats are challenges. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of weird that they have to specify that. But, um, I mean, yeah, you reroll once basically to hit if you're fighting with somebody weapon skill 5 or higher. So that's really good mm -hmm. uh, considering that the, usually the characters will have 5 or 6 weapon skill and you might be hitting on 3s in some cases, right? If you're fighting Praetor versus Praetor, now you're hitting on 3s, rolling 1s. So that's, that's I mean, really again... Good start combining like start stacking up some of these things like sign of the deathwing and slayer of kings and you and mastercraft weapon and you've got a lot of rerolls that's yourself. right yeah yeah so you're not gonna you're not gonna miss basically right yeah um, and, and like and then the bladed weapons your your mastery of the blade oh man like you're yep. gonna be hitting on threes and you're gonna be rerolling <laughs> along your misses or, yeah so you know rolling misses and yeah, yeah. exactly um so uh, Slayers of the Beast, so you can, or Hunters of Beasts, sorry. The model may reroll fail to wound rolls of one when engaged in combat uh, with any model of toughness five or any fail to wound rolls if the target is six or higher. So, I mean, again, like talking about demons, demons and Mechanicum, Mechanicum yeah. like, you yeah. know, Hunters of Beasts would be really good. You just um, go to town with those, those uh, Tyrannic Greatswords. That's right. That's right. So. Um, I mean, they didn't really put a designer's note on here, but we all know that. I, know. I think it's probably, <laughs> you know, a designer's note for the boat. Yeah, like, you have to build your army accordingly. So, um, I mean, if you're playing fun games and you know you're facing Mechanicum, yeah, you bring this stuff out, right? If you're building an old, like, all-comers list, yeah. um, it may not be as useful because majority of Marines do not have five toughness or more, right? Yeah. Um, Re Reaper of Hosts. So the model gains plus one attack. Uh, in any fight subphase in which they begin uh, in base contact with more than one enemy model. Um, so that's good. Um, it can happen quite a bit when you're fighting, you know, usually not first turn unless you're charged. If you're if you're savvy with like how mm -hmm. you're engaging your yeah. opponent's units, you can get them to pile into you. That's right. right? That's Especially right. So, if they have higher initiatives than you do, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it's not bad. Um, and then the last one, the Breaker of Witches. Uh, so you may reroll to hit and wound rolls in close combat when attacking an enemy affected by a blessing psychic power or an enemy with either Psyker or Brotherhood of Psychers, Psychic Pilot, Demon, or Demon of the Ruined Storm special rule. So basically, um, when you're fighting usually Thousand Suns or Demons, yep. um, or anybody that decides to bring a librarian and, you know, they put a blessing on a unit, oh, you, you know. You get this benefit so um, and that's that's all hit and wound rolls so that's that's a lot of, yeah that's a lot of rolls potentially um how do i feel about these i feel like no there's not a single one that really jumps out at me and i'm like oh my god i have to get this all the time right there isn't one that i'm like yes this is going to be a game changer so that's one thing that i found with the dark angels so i haven't actually gone crazy into the night lords but the dark angels i feel very much so that unlike some of the previous armies that have come out and i'm gonna name names thousand suns <laughs> mechanicum um and then you have like the white scars and blood angels kind of started that path and i feel like the dark angels were definitely built the way 
majority of the, like most of them i feel were attempted to be built for fluff so to actually flush out exactly what they are as opposed to thinking about how to make them really good and sell models you're saying that you feel like the last few black books have had some codex creep in terms of yes. just the the power level kind of like yeah, absolutely. slowly creeping up there and then this one's more a return to form of like the earlier books where they were built with an idea in mind this is <laughs> how right. the legion should. should play yeah and i mean um 25 points for these rules that none of them are game breaking isn't cheap no they're right? good they're and, good, and there's a points cost associated to that, it that's right so yeah I, I agree with you yeah yeah let's get into the right of war so each right of war, there's six of them. There's right? a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's a right of war for each of the scions, basically. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of nice. Uh, again, you basically have access to all the generic right of wars, rights of war, and then these. Now, my question is, I'm assuming that these rights of war overwrite the previous rights of war, right? So I can't just decide did to they take... Um, what did they have previously? Well, they previously, had two, didn't that's they? That's right. They had two, and I'm looking at them right now. So they have the Ravenwing Protocol and the Ironwing Protocol. So here, they're not called the same things. No, but they do have a Ravenwing and an Ironwing. That's right. They do. Right so war. I feel like I feel the intention was to replace those. Perhaps, but maybe but not. I don't know. I mean, they're not in the book. Th that's right. It doesn't specify. So I mean, if somebody actually wanted to run the Ironwing or Ravenwing Protocol. Um, I mean, I can't say that I would be able to stop them, right? But um, uh, I, they do it, appear in another official printing of. That's uh, right. Book, book six is where they are. Book six, yeah. So. Yeah. So we were kind of checking out. We were looking for something else. We were checking them out. But uh, okay. So um, what is the? So it says the Eschaton Imperative. Okay. So this is your Dreadwing, uh, Dreadwing one. So the the key points of this one is you can take the. Interruptors, Interruptors, the Dreadwing unit, as a troop choice. And Legion of Sawyer's Wilds. And Legion of Sawyer's choice as a troop choice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, benefits, um, all enemy models within 12 inches that uh, can draw a line of sight to an independent character with the Dreadwing Scion are leadership minus one. And this does not affect units that are immune to fear mm -hmm. and it does not stack. Uh, there's this blast, uh, Masters of the Black and Earth. So this is a weird one. So essentially, No Man's Land, right? Yeah, anything that's not a deployment zone. So No Man's Land is basically difficult terrain. Yeah. Buildings and stuff are not affected. Dangerous terrain is not affected. It's still dangerous terrain. Okay? Impassable In terrain, same. That's right. Yeah, nothing changes. So just everything is difficult terrain except the things that are already other things. Um, and then... Uh, they basically have to place three markers anywhere that's away six inches away from deployment zones and edges, and those are dangerous terrain. Am, am I correct? Yeah. Uh, the area within that marker, within six inches of that marker, is dangerous. So terrain. basically like 12-inch bubbles, they can place three of them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It would be... So like a 12-inch yeah. uh, circum circumference. No, 12-inch yeah. diameter. Um, and that's basically dangerous terrain. So this is really good because if you think about it, what Dreadwing get um, is they can move automatically forward in their real failed dangerous terrain test. So um, it makes it very slow for the enemy to move mm -hmm. and dangerous, especially you can like pile them on the other side. Yeah. Um, then the other thing you can get to is um, all independent characters with this rule may take the following option. So all models in the unit, sorry, all infantry with special uh, Legion of Studies Dark Angels that have at least one model with this Dreadwing special rule. So there's a couple of things that like repeat throughout the book and we'll kind of mention that. Basically all benefits apply to Dreadwing, like the Scion units, right? With every right. single right of war, basically. Yeah. All the benefits apply to only to those units. So that means you can get other units, yep. but they just don't get this benefit. And usually there's limitations as well, right? Um, so in this case, you can buy rad grenades for 30 points. Uh, per stas unit. Per unit. Stasis grenades for 30 points per unit and heavy weapons. Uh, if you have sp heavy weapons, you can take plasma incinerators, which actually aren't at the front, which is really weird. Yeah, I think it's in a unit. They're, uh, they're an choice. upgrade to yeah. the unit. So they're yeah. basically a plasma burner that's 18 inches, but it's heavy D3 plus 4. Yeah. 
So same thing, strength 4 AP2, ignore cover plasma flames. So uh, you're looking at 5 to 7 shots and uh, at 18 inches. So that's really good. So you could have an entire unit. Heavy support squad. Heavy support squad, basically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with like potentially 7 AP2 shots each. But see, this is, this is weird. Um, oh, that's any... Yeah, it says any Legion Astartes Dark Angel special unit. So that's really... Well, no, not necessarily. Because um, there's heavy weapons that can be ch taken on uh, veterans. You can have one in five. Uh, right? So they could technically take the Plasma Incinerator too. I think uh, technically... Yeah, because you can take a missile launcher on, on the, um, the assault platform. Uh... So, yeah, I guess... Stasis? Stasis? Uh, no, what's it called? I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I guess. So, yeah, so I well, guess. It, it, he can actually get it here. I'm trying to think what it's called. Uh, suspenser web. Suspenser Thank you. Web. Yeah. Um, so, you could technically give that to him for 25 points. Uh, there's a couple other units, I'm sure, that can get heavy weapons. Yeah. So, I mean, you can get this weapon instead, which is actually really good. Like, yes, it's a heavy weapon, but being able to fire, like, five to seven shots is really good yeah so right. the thing that sticks out here for me uh in these options is the stasis is the, is the stasis grenades well, it says all models in the unit may be equipped with stasis grenades but we it can't actually a, find a rule a, for stasis grenades yeah That's it gives right. a points cost per unit but if you go back and check it out you know the stasis shells come out of a grenade launcher typically grenade ranges are like eight inches uh, so we're not really sure how they're intending you to, like, what the profile is for a stasis grenade if it's not fired out of a grenade launcher. That's right. So I, this is what I would assume. I would assume that you can't throw it because in the rule book it says that unless it specifies you can't throw a grenade. It does. But if if you read the, like, the, the stasis anomaly rule, it's all models in a unit hit by one or more weapons with this special rule reduce their initiative. Right. So they... The intention is that you do have to use this before right. you charge something. Yeah, that's really weird. So, Unless the intention is that just if you're charged or assault, like assault grenades. Like a rad grenade? Yeah, like a rad grenade. That's right. Is that the unit is just at, my, at one initiative until the end of that game turn. So I, I honestly don't know. I know like Theo and I have kind of talked about it a little bit before this. Um, I don't think I can really like maybe the intention. I, I can't say there's. Okay, so first, if you know where this rule is. Please tell us, because I've looked in the rule book. We've looked in book six. We've looked in the Legion book. For maybe it's an, it's one of those digital copies of the book that we don't have that sure. get automatically updated. So maybe it's in there. So if you guys know, please tell us so we can. We'll, we'll I'll put a comment in or put a note in somewhere um, as well uh, because I would like to also know where that rule is. But as of right now, like both make sense. I mean, man, you if, you, to, if you don't even have to use it, like you might have just to use the it? first round of the... Yeah, or like, that's, that's right. Like, that's like, it's so huge. <laughs> like just, rad grenades, it's just... The rad grenades is first round. You don't even have to charge. Rad grenades is first round. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, um, please let us know, because either way, it's, it's it sounds really good. Um, but we can't quite figure out what they actually do. Yeah. Um, so, negatives, uh, or limitations, not negatives. So, your compulsory troop choices have to be Legion Destroyers or Dreadwing... Interruptor, interemptors. I don't know how you can say the other thing, but not that, because I find that one easier to say. <laughs> the, the, hecatonistica. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's right. I don't know. Um, so there's one weird thing here. So okay, so all compulsory troop choices, all compulsory troop choices must have at least one model with the Dreadwing special rule, the Scion. Right. So, so that's that's kind of a limitation in all of them. Yeah. So it you're gonna see that uh, come up kind of a lot. Um, here, your Dreadwing Interrupters, they already have your Scion on the Dreadwing special That's rule. Right. But if you do cho choose to uh, to pick Legion Destroyer squads, they don't. You'll have to pay that 25-point tax on your Sergeant of that unit to give him Scion of the Dreadwing. So weird. Um, another weird limitation. If an enemy unit that is not falling back in their deployment zone, at the end of the game then the opposing player gains plus one victory point or plus three victory points if that unit is a scoring unit. Yeah. So this is really weird. So basically, if your enemy has at least one unit in their deployment zone... That isn't falling that back. That isn't falling back, which most likely they're either... If they're falling back, they're probably dead because they'll fall run off the board. 
and if they're not falling back, it could be a vehicle, it could be anything, it doesn't say, it doesn't specify, then they get one victory point. And if it's a scoring unit, so if it happens to be a tactical squad, it's plus three victory points. So it's this like, is like, you need to clear out your opponent's deployment That's right. Zone. <laughs> so it's like, if you're his opponent, your troop choice automatically is just going to sit back in their deployment zone, bunker down, go to ground, yeah. hide behind vehicles, because and hope you've they pass basically, that leadership test. Yeah, you've basically given them an enormous objective. Yeah, that's I mean that that's they have not to even, hold. Yeah, it's, it's until the end of the turn. So an extra secondary objective. Yeah, and so a, it's, an expensive. One, it's a very expensive one. Yeah. Right. So it's definitely a very ex big limitation. I think this is if I were to say, I don't want to run this. That would be the reason why. Yeah. If I was like, if you're again very fluffy, but because Dreadwing have to get there, so I get the limitation. Yeah. But. If I'm playing a game to to win, this would be a tough one to justify because holy smokes, like you're automatically giving your opponent yeah. three victory points, yeah, right? Or you have to clear the deployment zone, yeah. like clear. Um, so it's a tough one, but it's it's interesting for sure. Um, the warlord has to be dreadwing or lion. Uh, all so this is the other one. All infantry units and independent characters, including in this army. So not just like. Compulsory, all infantry units. Yeah, everything. Must be within a transport vehicle, including those placed in reserve. So, just to kind of specify, your destroyers can't take jump packs. Yeah, so if you took the destroyer squads as your troops, then uh, you wouldn't be able to give them the jump pack upgrade. Not just as troops. Like, if you took them, period. Because they're infantry. Yeah, right. Right? But, like, if you... <laughs> yeah, so if you decided to take them as your compulsory troops instead of the Dreadwing Interrupters... Unless... They're then, considered jump infantry. Is jump infantry different than infantry? No, right? They're infantry. I, 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 I think so too. I, 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 I don't think that changes. I'm not sure if the intention here is to say like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But so, and then the um, the interrep, interemptor squad, their dedicated transport is a land raider. <laughs> yeah. So it's an expensive transport. <laughs> That's a very expensive transport. I mean... If you put them in an anvilus drop pod, right? Because they were they're really good in anvilus drop pod. Yeah. Um. Then that's your transport. It's cheaper than a land raider, sure. and it delivers them like right where you want them. I mean, you're seeing like the elite first legion <laughs> represented right. in this right of war. You're gonna have a lot of small, like a lot of. Uh, you're not gonna have a lot of units. You're not gonna that's have right. like a, you know, eighty models. I mean, you could run tactical squad in rhinos. Yeah. Right. As you're like. For other troop choices. Yeah. Right? But, but probably... But if you're running, like, Dreadwing... Yeah, you're going to have a couple of Land Raiders. Want, like, yeah, you're going to have a couple of Land Raiders with... And that squad's probably pretty expensive when you start upgrading that's right. and stuff. So. The only downside to me is the Destroyers. That's kind of weird, because you got to put them in Rhinos. Yeah. Um, I always imagine Destroyers with Jump Packs coming down and shooting. Like, maybe that's just, like, a false assumption, but that's how I see them, right? In the stories, that's how they, like, talk about them. Right? Like, Death Guard, and, like, they all seem to have jump packs, from what I remember. So, I don't know. Kind of weird. But, um, yeah, no transports. Um, so, and then... Yeah, then all, the other thing that's going to be very common throughout the rest of these is going to be uh, made on include fortification or allied detachment, and uh, no unit from this detachment can be joined by independent characters not part of the detachment. So... Can you so can you specify that one? So you can still like if we had uh, sworn sworn brothers or sworn uh, whatever like the. But I can't take an allied detachment though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the army may not include fortification detachment or allied detachment, and it says no unit from a detachment using this sort oh, of war um, can be joined by an independent character not part of this detachment. Uh, what about like Garrow? He can be taken in an army. Okay. Without like that's like being very a separate specific. detachment. Right? So you could have like you could have like a, a gray knight guy, uh, but not uh, you know he wouldn't be his own allied detachment. So this is like literally that. like a rule for every single right of war. Yeah. You can't take fortifications or allies, and no unit from a detachment using this right of war can be joined by an independent character that's not part of this detachment. It's probably that. So like the one weird like who would have thought of that? I, maybe they're play testing it. They just came up with some crazy combos with like they're like I'm gonna throw Garrow in here too. And I don't know. You never know. E anyways, yeah. so that's Dreadwing. So what do you think? I mean, I think it's cool. Um, again, the one limitation kind of like sucks. It's a lot of points to give away for like no reason, especially where some of the like 
missions can be very low point costed. Do you know what? I, I feel like they kind of moved away from uh, having <coughs> like, um, strong restrictions and limitations in, in a lot of the more recent rights of war that have come out. <laughs> so yeah. like to see them kind of move back in this direction, I like it. You know, you, you get something, but you lose something. So, like, there's that balance. There's that give and take in the design of the right of war. So, it, yeah, while it's it's pretty, like, it's pretty... Limiting? Yeah, mean. You know, like, it's kind of yeah, nasty. But that said, though, having, you know, like, all, you're, the all entire squads with plasma burners is pretty damn good. Sure, and the entire right? table is dangerous terrain. Diff, yeah. You know, difficult and dangerous terrain. So. Yeah, that, that's, that is really good. So, when you think about it, yeah, I mean, that's a, a good right of war with a strong limitation but it's a good right of war yeah so uh steel fist yeah next we got steel fist so this one's your um this one's your iron wing um right of war <clears throat> so the iron brother is a predator predator strike squads may be selected as compulsory troop choices so not must be but maybe so you can still take other troops as your compulsory if you wanted so do you have to have multiple of them or do you have to have you, you don't have to buy them any upgrades you don't have to have um more than one right no nope. you know uh, so you can just yeah, take like a single predator yeah you can just take a single predator with the auto can so that's like, 75 what, like points 70 points or whatever yeah yeah really cheap no well, that's that, that's good yeah um the only downside is like the scion of the iron wing only applies to legion of studies dark angels yeah right so interesting but um still i i think that's cool like they can have all uh all vehicles yeah um, so Marshal uh, of the Steel Fist is independent character models in this detachment with Scion of the Iron Wing grant any transport vehicle in which they embark to 6 plus invulnerable save or increase an existing save by 1 uh, Armored Assault is non-terminator infantry units except jump infantry or jetpack infantry with 10 or fewer models and at least one model with the Scion of the Iron Wing special rule uh, in this detachment may take a Proteus or Phobos Land Raider as a dedicated transport and infantry models or units with 15 or more models may select a Spartan assault tank. So this is basically all units that don't already have this rule. Basically, that can go in a land raider, can take a land raider. Yeah, you just have to buy your sergeant the 25-point scion of the Iron Wing, and they can now take land raiders as transports. Right, yeah. right. Or you can put a independent character with them and, oh, no. No, because it doesn't guarantee that an independent character will be um, in that squad. So I think, yeah, you're right. The characters yeah. would have to have that upgrade, and then uh, you could give them this, uh, yeah, like a Spartan. So again, if you ran this way... Again, a very highly elite, like small yeah. force, right? Because you're paying a lot of points for in those in those transport that's options. That's right. But that's May, so you don't need to do yeah, it. Yeah, and of course, like this is just option. You don't need to be doing this. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're running this right of war, you're probably doing it for that reason. You probably want vehicles. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then lastly, we've got uh, Aegis of Iron. Uh, whenever a unit from this detachment uh, that includes at least one model with iron sign of the Iron Wing uh, is embarked upon a transport vehicle that suffers damage, uh, maybe re-roll pinning tests or armor saves that result from that damage. So if you get blown out of your ride, you get to re-roll your... Or shaken. Uh, that's a leadership check. Oh, yeah, that's right? different. Because you're inside of it. That's right. The that's pinning right. test happens when your vehicle gets destroyed. You're right. You're so right. you get to re-roll that pinning test, and if you get blown up, you know, any failed armor saves that you take, uh, you get to re-roll those. Uh, so then uh, the limitations on this one are um, infantry units in the army must begin the game deployed in a transport vehicle with the tank type that has sufficient transport capacity to carry them. Um, so if you're putting your units in reserve, you don't need to... Um, you don't need to have transports, but if you're putting them on the board, you must have a transport for them. Yeah. 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 Uh, no more than a single unit of each of the following types may be included uh, in this right of war. So bikes, jet bikes, flyers. So you can still take those units, but you can only take one of each. Uh, so is that is that like one of each? So I could take one unit of bikes, one unit of jet bikes, one flyer, or? No yeah, more no more than a single of unit each. of each of the following. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you can take a bike unit outriders you could take a jet bike unit and you could take a flyer, a flyer. Yeah. uh at least half of the units in the army must consist entirely of vehicles with the tank type which so, makes it easy the fact that your compulsory troop choices can be predators uh yeah yeah yep uh cannot take fortification or allied detachment and cannot be joined by independent characters not part of this detachment so again the same yep. same two so i mean it, we talk about this one so um 
So it says independent character models in the detachment grant any transport vehicle that embarked the six plus invulnerable save or a plus one to an invulnerable save. So you have to, so that's only transports, right? Your regular vehicles don't get this ability, um, but you do have the ability to run um, tanks as troops. So, I mean, uh, I think this is kind of a little bit different than the than the generic one because the generic one mainly is, is majority of the vehicles, right? Where this one is, you have troops that have to be in vehicles, right? And then you have vehicles of support that are also troops, right? And we all know the Predators, um, like they're not the hardest to kill, but when you have a lot of them and you have other threats, like you're going to have a lot of troop choices in this army yeah. and you're going to have lots of opportunities to score. And with Predators being able to score, yeah, they, they can be difficult to remove sometimes, Yeah, right? So... I do really like this one. It's not like crazy limiting. You can still get a bunch of other units, but you get benefits. Uh, the benefits aren't insane, but the limitations aren't bad either. So I think this is one that um, I would like to see on the board somewhere. I'm sure somebody will love running <laughs> right? this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just having Spartan as Spartan tanks as a dedicated transport. For your, for your like tactical squad. Yeah, like I'm going like, to take a big tactical yeah, squad. Yeah, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Let's talk about... <coughs> I'm not gonna complain about armies like mechanicum with hoplites and haywire all over the place because i've done that before but even and, and even I, an army that was specifically designed to be able to deal with a lot of heavy armor like that mm -hmm. could struggle against an army like this because there's just so much <laughs> that's right that's right i mean yeah yeah your spartan may not survive a turn but your predators will but you've got right? two more of them that's right <laughs> you know, yeah like... yeah and then remember too guys there's just one thing that i find that people sometimes forget so let's say i have a unit of two predators okay and you drop and they're like kind of sitting there and you drop your hoplites next to my one predator well all the first shots as you go get allocated to that first predator but as soon as the predator dies he provides cover for your second predator okay so your second predator can now start taking cover saves as long as so if the unit of hoplites let's say wants to come out in the open and fire at both they'll kill them but then they're going to be in the open and they're going to die the next turn right where the other way once he starts actually allocating attacks to the second one um the first one actually will provide cover sure right so um I, I don't know. I've seen it happen a couple of times where people get surprised by this, but I've seen lots of good players take, make, you know, use this as an advantage. So if you want to put your hoplites in the open and be able to see both tanks, then you blow them out of the water, right? But your hoplites are going to die, right? And I talk about hoplites because they're the worst unit in the game. I run them with my Mechanicum, but I've got, I, I've... Hate, I hate running them. I literally, like, hate running them. I have some they're beautiful are... units, beautiful models. Go but Getting painted right now. Too, yeah, so. yeah. Anyways storm of war okay so this is a um what's what's this one uh this one would be your sign of the storm wing storm wing that's right that's right so you make snapshots at ballista's kill of two okay so um it's kind of big uh so all legion tactical squads and assault squads selected as compulsory troop choices consisting of at least 20 models may include a centurion so the Centurion can't get any console upgrades, but otherwise, and may not be your Warlord, but otherwise acts the same and may not leave the unit during the game. So um, you're not putting him in the transport, right? Because it's, well... No, you could, well, you could, Spartan? they would fit in a Spartan. Right. Yeah. Um, but you have to have 20 models. So you can, you can get a Centurion um, and put it in the unit. He can't be, well, he can still be picked out by like precision shot, but... He, he can't leave. He's basically part of that unit. Yeah. Right? No, he can't take a console upgrade, but he can still take... Uh, you can still give him weapons. You take can weapon give him and, armor. And armor yeah. upgrades and stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah, um, like the little baby mini characters running around. Yeah. You're probably going to buy him Scion of the Stormwing, too. Um, um, well, I think you probably have to. You probably have to. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, let's 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 go, go to that right away. Um, all compulsory troop choices in this detachment must include at least one model that has the so storming special rules. So you'll probably be buying him storming him or the other character, but why not give it to the Centurion? Right? Yeah, exactly. The Centurion is <laughs> going to have a little bit more sticking power than that's a right. One wound sergeant. So, so it says all Praetors and uh, Centurions in this detachment may attempt to issue a single order. So orders affecting the units uh, that he's joined. So with no given unit able to benefit from more than one order. So once an order has been successfully issued to a unit, 
any further orders issued to it fail. So you basically can't issue multiple orders in the same unit, right? Uh, so if you have two characters in there, only one of the orders will apply. Yep. Uh, and then to, successful, to successfully issue an order, a model must declare that it intends to pass a leadership test. Um, if it passes it, it's, it's good. Um, and it affects the until your next turn. So the full, like... Full game turn. Full game turn plus whatever. Until the beginning of your next turn. Yeah. Um, and it only, again, applies to the Legion Tactical Squad or Legion Assault Squad that the model has joined. Right? Yep. Uh, is this true? Only affect the issuing model and the Legion Tactical Squad or Legion Assault Squad, which it has joined. Yes. So um, you can do hold the line. So you declare at the start of your movement phase and you cannot be engaged in combat if you issue it you can feel no pain six plus but may not move so this one's interesting because it doesn't actually say uh feel no pain six plus or plus one yeah it just says feel no pain six yeah. plus so, so it's not making your apothecaries uh feel that's no pain right better. and and i would say that that i would agree with that because there's other rules that do similar things but actually tells you it's plus one yeah so uh so volley fire so you do this in your shooting phase, and you can only do it on your tactical squad. So you may Fury of the Legion even if you had moved, but not disembarked or embarked in the same turn. So um, you can move your unit and then get in within uh, the rapid fire range, and then you can Fury of the Legion with right. your tactical squad. It also says you can't run either. That, uh, that's right. That's right. I just assume that you can't shoot if you run. But yeah, they do specify that, so that's kind of nice. So um, it, it's, it's a good one, right? Because you can move and... The best thing range. about Fury of the Legion is being in rapid fire range when That's you right. do it. Because forty shots is still it's <laughs> yeah, forty shots. Right? That's or a it, lot of it, shots. Sorry, you're gonna have eighty shots because these have to be right, twenty right, man right. squads. Eighty shots, you're right. So, you know, and it's it's pretty difficult <coughs> to have somebody walk to within rapid fire range of you and get to Fury of the Legion. So this is nice because now you can move, get yourself into that range, and still do it. That's right. I mean maybe and who not, doesn't love maybe not all twenty models would be in range. Probably that's not. A lot. It, that's that's a big <laughs> footprint, but I yeah. mean who doesn't love, you know, throwing down eighty dice, eighty bolter shots that's and right. just you know. So yeah. That that's right. Cool. So so that, that one's really neat. Um full assault. So you do this in the assault phase. Um, may only be used if not engaged at the start of that phase. And if issued you gain furious charge. And furious charge is it's plus one strength. Plus one strength? Yeah. So um, that's really good, right? Um, again, it only applies uh, tactical or assault squads. So in this case, it would be good for the assault squads, right? Yeah, fantastic. When you're charging, right? And then field reserves. So you declare at the beginning of the turn if a unit is in reserve. So this is one of the only rules that like applies when the unit is actually off the table. Yeah. So it's interesting. But, well, there's a couple of units that do. But um, And then um, regardless of the current turn number. So this is an interesting one. Regardless of the current turn number. So turn one. So turn one. And if successfully issued, the unit automatically passes its reserve test and gains the outflank special rule. So it says regardless of the current turn number. So it definitely can be turn one. And you gain outflank and you can come in. So Tactical Squad and Legion Assault Squad can both utilize this and just come in and outflank. Mm -hmm. Right? And 20... As long as you can pass the Leadership 9 test. Yeah. That's right. Or Centurions have 9. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, I mean... It can that, be that's an, great. That's really a, that's a but really it could be a Praetor too, right? A Praetor so, could be attached should, to that squad. Yeah, yeah. Leadership absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, um, I mean, then that's a really aggressive move, right? To come on with a big block. Twenty man. Think squad. about doing this with multiple units, right? Like yeah. two twenty man squads uh, coming in, outflanking, like into your opponent's plum zone or turn one. It's a very yeah. bold, aggressive move, and. <laughs> Might uh, yeah. leave a lot of pe people panicking, like, "Oh, what do I do?" Yeah, well, you got to deal with them. Yeah, right. And you got to deal with that tactical squad because they could have they they still have grenades, right? So next turn, crack grenades can still damage majority of vehicles, right? Yeah. Assault squads could have alpha bombs, so they can threaten any vehicle then, right? So you yeah. got to deal with them, and that's that's kind of nice because anytime you're really like your opponent's reacting to you, right? Yeah, and, like and anytime you make them make the tough decisions, there's more chance that they're going to make mistakes, yeah. right? Um, limitations. So again, all compulsory troop choices must include at least one model with the storming special rule. Um, no unit selected as compulsory troop ch uh, choices can mess, must take dedicated may take dedicated transports, which so you can't buy the dedicated uh, Spartan, <laughs> right? Well, that was from the other Red War. 
Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. You're right. So You're it right. says no unit selected as compulsory troop choice. Remember, you only have two compulsory troop choices. That's right. Right? The the other four troop choices that you get are not compulsory. So, But you could still... Couldn't you still put them in a land raider? Spartan? So you could take a compulsory troop choice and still put them in a heavy support. Spartan. Spartan. Yeah. And you can put them in reserves and outflank and come on the side. I think... He's looking at me weird, but I like, think that only applies to a dedicated transport, not just a heavy support transport. I think you can start in any transport. Okay, we're going to look at this up well, later. Well, yeah, we'll look at that later. Actually, let us know, because we're not going to look it up. I, I'm i thinking you can, but you may be right, and like the, the like rules may I think only the apply to... the rule only applies to a dedicated Dedicated, transport. so we'll, we'll look it up. So we just looked it up. It is dedicated transport. So specifically says if a unit deploys inside a dedicated transport, they may outflank. Yeah. So you can mm -hmm. put it in yeah, a Spartan. Oh, and totally. I was like, this is awesome. Bring like two Spartans on Shenanigans. the Shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. So you can't do that. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Um, that would that would have been fun. I would have liked that. <laughs> um, next. So the Warlord, again, uh, has to be Stormwing or Lion. You may not take fortifications. Uh, same thing. Uh the army must include more Legion Assault squads or tactical squads combined than the total number of all other units selected. Any Centurion selected do not count. So this one is interesting, actually, because... Okay, so let's talk about this one. So you must include more Legion Assault squads or Legion Tactical squads than the total number of all other units selected. So, so you're going to be filling out your troop slots. Maybe not with the... You're going to have to have the two big 20-man squads. Mm -hmm. But then you're probably maybe... If you wanted to save points and use those elsewhere in your list, you maybe have your, your four other tactical squads. So you've got six troop choices total. But you're going to be limited with the other units, right? Well, how many and other units can you really take? You can take like an HQ and then, you know, fast attack and heavy maybe sport choices. Those things are pretty expensive already, right? So you're not, you're probably not taking three of each. You know, you're going to get a couple yeah, here and yeah. there. Yeah, so definitely so. it's, it's, it's definitely so more of all assault squads. I like, tactical squads. I really like this Bright of War because when we first started, like the first book came out, mm -hmm. the way that I imagined Horus Heresy games going down was like 20 80 Marines. Marines. Yeah just blasting each other with bolters all game long and like the game's kind of really moved away from that like a lot of rule of cool and like really awesome units that they've come out really neat things and it's just really moved away from that and this brings me back to like this yeah. is how you're designing your list you're designing your list with big big squads yeah. and you're shooting your army your your opponent down with <laughs> bolters and and yeah like you know assault squads coming out out flanking turn mm -hmm. one with melt the bombs you know, they can threaten anything. Yep. So I, I really like this threat of war. The only downside to this threat of war, I think, is if, uh, um, like, Marines are easy to kill. Yeah, they right. are, right? But, I mean, it, you're not restricted from not taking, like, Terminators, right? You can take those units, too. They just can't have more of those units total than you have of your... Troops. So the other thing too is like you could uh, run the lion, right? And he gains outflank too, mm -hmm. right? Because if you put it with a squad of tactical marines or assault squad marines, right? He'll gain outflank with them. And so first turn you can have him in face as long as you pass your 10 leadership with the lion, which you hope you do, right? You still need an independent character because he doesn't technically have scion yeah, rule, right? right? So you still need an independent character or a character with that rule. But I mean, you could have your whole army outflank first turn right next to the enemy and one of those things could be the lion um so yeah. i mean that's cool right it, it could be right really there cool. and the lion is amazing in combat so um this is a nice one uh if i felt like painting 160 marines, uh, yeah 120 marines i guess um i would definitely like to play this one because um it would be really, really cool to play. And I mean, I hope your opponent knows that you're running it too because then they can maybe build something as well that's just as fun and not just, you know, yeah. all AP2, AP3, let's just massacre Marines like like nothing, right? Um, next one. So, Unbroken Vow. Yeah. Okay, uh, so... Interesting name. Is there going to be a Broken Vow one? 
I think there, I, the I think there, it's definitely possible that uh, that you could uh, be breaking the vow because this uh, is definitely the Deathwing one. Yeah, so this is your Deathwing right of war, and uh, your veteran squads and Legion Terminator squads may be selected as troops choice, which I love in this detachment. Yeah, so again, maybe so they don't have to be, yep. but maybe. Um, and uh, Marshal the Unbroken Vows, independent characters of the Legion of Stars, Dark Angels, Sign of the Deathwing, gain plus one attack will while within twelve inches of an objective. So that's really nice. Yeah, I mean, twelve inches is a pretty big bubble. If there's multiple objectives across the table, like five or six, and you know you've got a good portion of the table where you get plus one attack. Um, <clears throat> and death is not the end. Any unit with Legion of Studies Dark Angels special rule that has at least one model with sign of the Deathwing special rule uh, gains feel no pain six plus, uh, while it has at least one model within six inches of any objective. And if it already has feel no pain, it increases that by one so, so this is what i was talking about right you could put an apothecary in a tactical marine squad yeah now you have four plus field pain yeah when you're within six inches of an objective but you and should be there holding that objective anyways yeah so, so it, like i like that it specifies that it, it you only have to have a model not the entire unit so it, it makes it very clear that this is how they're intending it for it to work and yeah you could get up to like four plus field pain yeah right? which yeah. is which is awesome awesome right um so like your limitations in this one is uh all compulsory troop choices uh uh, must be filled by Legion veteran squads or Legion Terminator squads. Okay, so I take back what I said earlier. It says may be selected well, they, well, as troops, but, but it says... But what it says is they may be selected as troop choices, but you have to have them as compulsory troop choices. Yeah. So you could technically have a veteran squad, two veteran squads as your compulsory troops. You could have four tactical squads as your troops, but then you could also have more veteran and Terminator squads as elites. Yeah. Right? So I think that's kind of the intention of it. So they have to be your compulsory troops, but they don't have to be just troops they could still be elites yeah um if you want to fill your army with all troops uh, so all compulsory troop choices with legion stars dark angels uh must include at least one model sign of the death wing special rule okay so again your compulsories have to be veteran squads or terminator squads you're gonna have to pay that 25 point tax for your sergeant just to give them sign of the death that's wing. right and just to like uh reiterate the death wing special rule is the character um so any model with the special rule um uh, may re-roll first fail to hit roll on any phase while they're engaged in a challenge right so uh <clears throat> after deployment has been completed dark angels player must place a single objective at the center of the table uh and at the end of the game or, or and sorry at the end of any game turn in which the dark angels player does not control this objective a unit that includes at least one model with the sign of the deathwing special rule uh, the opposing player gains one victory point or three if the opposing player controls that objective. So this is an extra objective on top of the normal ones. And this one's very punishing for the Dark Angels player if you aren't controlling that objective. Because you gain no bonus whatsoever from controlling that objective all game. And if you don't control it, you give up one point a turn or three points per turn if your opponent can control it. That's right. So this is kind of weird. Uh, this one I don't like. It's this is um, this is because, incredibly punishing. Well, for a couple of reasons I don't like it. One, what does it do? Like, is it the same as the other objectives in the game? Because there's lots of different missions in the rule book. Half of them are objective missions. One of them, the objectives are scored every turn. The other one, objective is scored like it's only an objective in the opponent's deployment zone, right? Mm -hmm. The one where you put it in the deployment zone. So that one is worth, I think, five victory points. And then there's the ones where... Well, there are, like, missions where they have varying um, objective Objectives points, as well, right? right? So so technically, like, if I were to assume, I would assume, yes, this just follows the same rule as whatever objective is currently in the game. But there's lots of missions where there is no objectives, right? So in in that case... Like, how much is that objective how much is this worth objective at the end worth, of the game? Right? Because if it's a kill point mission, then is it worth one point, two points three points like it doesn't say so you would assume one point but then the opposing player can like control it oh man if for like the game for a kill point game and just controlling the center objective for five turns i'd be like i got 15 points plus whatever i killed yeah like it's like it's crazy so i feel like this one needs to be flushed out more they need to it'd be nice like, if they clarified that but man like that like is maybe that is end a, of the game okay i could see like if the opponent just gets these points at the end of the game Okay, 
like it's still like we talked about the the other one where you lose points you're like, talking about them changing that's right i'm talking about them changing it like i can yeah. see that but it, it, like, it is yeah, that's a very punishing like uh, right now man. like all game you have to sit on an objective and it does nothing for you most of the game except it could do crazy things against you right so yeah. it's it's definitely a weird one i really feel this is a weird one um i'm not a huge fan of it uh not just a limitation like i like the actual <coughs> um i like the actual right of war i just don't like that limitation again it's, i like the give and take of things but like again this one feels really like it's a little bit overtuned for uh against the dark angel yeah, player. yeah yeah and then if you guys decide to put comments on on youtube um, and and talk about this. Just make sure you mention that you're talking about this right of war, so unbroken vow, or any of the other ones. And just you know, maybe we're not reading this correctly. I don't know. So uh, let us know, and then uh, I'll mention it again in the next next round that we do next video or next podcast. And and definitely let me know or message us or message me directly, like on on Instagram or or Facebook. Just message and and let me know because I definitely um, I don't quite understand the intention of that one yeah, that because it's, it seems pretty punishing and pretty like limiting. So there's a few more, uh, limitations again, very similar must include uh, armies warlord must include sign of the death wing or be Lionel Johnson. Uh, no detachment can be joined by independent characters. None of this detachment. However, it says the army may not include an allied detachment. It doesn't say anything about fortifications. So maybe what you do here is you grab a fortress of redemption, you drop it right in the center of the you, table. Are you able to put it in the center of the table? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I was just like, I'm just spitballing here. But you know what? You're right. <laughs> like, I didn't, I didn't you actually your catch fortress that. of redemption, and I, you just sit in it with your all your terminators, and you say, "Come at me." <laughs> I didn't actually catch that at all. So let me. Uh, I don't know. Do they even have a force fortress of defense? Um, Fortress of Redemption on here. Uh, to be honest, I'm not too I familiar with do. all of the fortifications that are available in 30k. So because I'm, I'm I'm looking at the rules actually right now. But, but I, I I just thought you know maybe like that's yeah. Let us know. I'm not going to look at this rule because it's yeah. I don't even think the Fortress of Redemption is actually in the book. Um, but it would be pretty. Uh, I'm looking at it right now, but it's not. It's definitely not. So yeah. um, I mean, if you do find something and t tell me because i'm i'm actually interested if that's something that's possible that you can just put in the middle and then you fight over it huh interesting <laughs> um okay what the seeker's arrow so this is the um firing one right yes <coughs> firing firing right of war so uh, oh, no, no, no no this, this is, is the raven, raven wing. wing sorry yeah. <coughs> raven wing so Jetbike Skyhunter Squadrons and Legion Outriders are may be selected as troop choices. So not comp compulsory ones, but I'm going to look and see all compulsory troop choices with the Legion of Studies, Dark Angel Special Rule must include Ravenwing Scion. So I guess they don't have to be compulsory ones, but you can choose them as your troops. So, I mean, I would probably take them as compulsory troops. Um, independent characters may with the Scion of Ravenwing may take hit and run for 20 points. So this is an extra hit 20 points, and then you get hit and run. Um, Which, I, uh, does that confer to the squad? Like a unit that they join as well? I, I think so, yeah. Um, I, I think, don't Outriders automatically come with hit and run? I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. But, uh, I yeah, don't so really use a lot of jet bikes. So. Th it's, it's a nice rule. Or um, bikes altogether. Really. So um, if you have the Sound of Raving special rule, um, the, the, the unit gains outflank. And arise from reserves on a roll of two plus, right? That's nice. <coughs> That's really nice. Um, not not first turn, like the other one. Yeah. But two plus is still way better That's than three plus. Awesome. Yeah. And then it says uh, any unit that has the Ravenwing rule adds plus two to the following. So it says run slash turbo boost to one. They get to choose one of each of the following. That's right. Each game turn. Yeah. yeah. So run or turbo boost charge distance. Or consolidation move. So so here's that. So what, what what's thrust? Yeah. So here's where what we were getting thrust? into that thrust thing because I was like, it says run slash turbo boost, but like over here under the sign of the Raven Wing is run fall back or thrust distance. So, so you like, can so with know. the Raven Wing you can re-roll run fall back or thrust, and here you get plus two to run turbo boost, charge or consolidation. Yeah. I have no clue what thrust is. I have no idea. Either. Is it a jump pack thing? Is thrust a jump pack thing? Or is it included in a Mechanicum? 
Jetpack units. Jetpack units. Have thrust. Okay, we yeah. found it. I literally opened it to the page. So jetpack units have thrust move. So a thrust move is the move they can make in the assault phase. It's 2d6 inches, and they can make in the assault phase. So, so the only things that I can think of that have jetpacks are like the Mechanicum. Yeah, there's Mechanicum guys. units that have jetpacks, like um, Thalax. Toughness 5, guys. Uh, yeah, Thalax. Um, <clears throat> what marine units have thrust? <laughs> I don't know. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, if we get into this, uh, may not include fortification or allied detachment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so how do you feel about this one? Um, it's good, right? Um, like, you're going to see a lot of jet bikes and outriders. So you're going to probably see jet bikes with acid shells. You're going to see outriders with the repeater. Yeah. Repeaters. Outflanking. Yeah. Um, plus, doing a lot of damage. Plus two inches to, like, charges. Is, is amazing like and, and all is bikes all bikes from what i know in jet bikes do have two close combat weapons as well right all of them come with a chain sword and a bolt pistol so yeah. most of your jet bikes and bikes have two attacks base so when you're charging they have three um getting plus two is really really good um plus two inches is, is really good mm -hmm. uh you, i mean you ignore difficult terrain you you do take dangerous terrain tests but you ignore difficult terrain so um it's it's really really good Really Controlling good. movement phase is really underrated, <clears throat> uh, but it can win you games. That's right, and then also you can have and, hit and, and run. And this is this is a right? yeah, and this is a highly mobile <laughs> army. army. And, and then you can buy them hit and run, so you could you like get move yourself... engage, yeah, can't be shot at, yeah, right. And then you hit and run the end of that next turn, and then you move, shoot, and charge again, yeah. right. You get that extra attack, so it's definitely an interesting army. I mean, yeah, you're gonna lose models when you're engaging, but if you're engaging right you're saving your units because jetpacks have two plus armor, yep. right? So you're charging into a unit that you didn't make fall back and nobody can shoot at you. They can't hurt you unless they're charging you with their elite units. But I'm hoping that you're pitting your elite units against his elite units. Like if you put the lion in this army. I don't know if you really would. Yeah, honestly. I don't know. It doesn't actually say. Um, I don't know if you would. Not not in this army. You're, you're building this army to do one thing. That's like bring a lot of bikes. And uh, yep. yeah. Yeah. I mean, the lion can't go on a bike. Yeah, I would <laughs> watch. They come up with a lion model on the bike and Kong Kong, it? Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, you can't do that. So, <laughs> okay. um, it, it's a really cool one. I like it. I'll definitely like. I would run it. I would build uh, an army like this. And uh, I mean, I have a white scar army, so I don't know how many more bikes I want. But it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a nice, nice list to to run. Not crazy limitations, and you know, not the benefits are good. You do pay for them. It's expensive. Yeah. Right. Like you're if if you want the Ravenwing special rule and hit and run, like you're paying four or five points. Yeah. Like that's a lot. Yeah. But um, they're they're good. All right. So the last one's uh, the Serpent's Bane. Uh, okay. So we have Strike Force. Uh, this one is your Firewing. Mm, firewing. That's right. Uh, right of war. Um, so your Legion Secret Squads and Firewing Enigmatis Cadres may be taken as troop choices in a primary attachment against the Right of War. At the start of the game, controlling player must select three enemy HQ elite or Lord of War choices priority targets. Uh, all units in this detachment that include at least one model of the Scion of the Firewing special rule add one to all wound or armor penetration roll against those priority targets. And if the enemy doesn't have enough of those uh, HQ elite or Lord of War choices, then you can just pick um, as many that you need to fill those three choices from your opponent's army list. Uh, Marshals of the Ever Burning Flame is independent characters uh, with Legion Stars, Dark Angels, and Sign of Firewing gain plus one attack when locked in combat with with the priority target. And uh, forward deployment protocols up to three troop choices that include at least one model with fire, Sign of the Firewing special rule chosen by the controlling player may be given the infiltrate special rule. Uh, and if deployed um, no more than 17 inches from a priority target, gain the Rage special rule until the end of the second game turn. So they get Rage for two turns. Now, the thing that's really difficult about that is that it says you can be deployed no more than 17 inches uh, with your Infiltrate rule, which means that you have to be out of sight, out of line of sight. And that's really difficult to do that's with right. an Infiltrate like, With the way like the ruins all have holes in them and the way like the terrain works, it's... Like, don't get me wrong, The actually the Firewing Enig Enigmatis Cabal is only three models. It's only three models. So, like, those you could probably get close, maybe, but... Uh, but, I mean, like, as, as, like, somebody that uses a lot of infiltrators, like, I know how difficult it can be to, like, yeah. 
to get a unit out of line, completely out of line of sight of like everything in your opponent's army. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, so you often like end up putting yourself in that eighteen inch line. Okay, so the uh, limitations on this one uh, is uh, all compulsory troop choices must be filled by their Le Legion Seeker squads or Legion Assault squads. I, I like that. Like, Seekers are awesome. Yeah, Seekers are great. Right? You can't get the Enigmatis Firewing squads as uh, compulsory troops. No, so you're going to have to take at least a couple <clears throat> yeah, like, Seekers. But, but Seeker or... squads are awesome. Yeah. Right? So I really, I like them. And then with priority targeting, they're really good. Yeah. Uh, compulsory troop choices in this attachment with Legion of Stars. Dark Angels must include at least one model with the sign of the Fire Wing. So again, you're going right, to yeah. pay that tax. Warlord have to be Fire Wing or Lionel Johnson. Yeah. Uh, can only claim so this victory. Is weird. This yeah. One, yeah, this one. Yeah, this is one other one of those pretty tough uh, limitations. Can only so the army using this right of war. So Dark Angel player can only claim victory at the end of the game if all three priority targets are destroyed or otherwise removed from play as casualties. If any remain on the battlefield at the end of play, then the Dark Angels player loses the game, regardless of victory points accumulated or other conditions in play. So this one's like, so, you got to kill those things. Yeah, so like, you you have to kill those things, and they have to be either Lord of War, HQ, or Elite, yeah. right? So if the guy has like an HQ and two Elites, okay, maybe you pick those, but some Lord of Wars can be really difficult to remove, right? Because um, it could be a Primarch. It could right? be a Primarch, It could yeah. be a Primarch, right? Um, and if you don't remove them, it doesn't matter how much you outplay your opponent, you lose. So, again, it's one of those that it's it's weird. It's cool in the sense that it's very fluffy. Like, you're running Firewing to destroy these. Yeah. What I thought, when I started reading that rule, I thought, oh, so all I have to do is kill those three units and I win. And if I don't kill those three units, I lose. But that's not it at all if you have I, to do that if i kill them and still achieve the objective that's right so <clears throat> i think that's a little tough sometimes well you have to declare what those units are at the beginning of the game that's as right. well and again you like a savvy opponent's gonna be like okay well i'm gonna do my best to try and keep those safe if you pick my super scary uh like elite um unit that i bring into combat and and my death star mm -hmm. that i use for everything you know what okay maybe i'll just Maybe, I just I'll, sit back, maybe yeah. I'll just sit back this game and, and try and achieve the objectives <laughs> and keep them alive, knowing that if you don't kill it, as long as I get some of the objectives, I've won. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about like, let's talk about how the game is played. So if you play the game like it's in like we talk about fun playing games, you won't have an opponent that just sits back and hides a unit that's meant to be in combat. Yeah. Okay. But if you bring this list to like a competitive tournament. Which, you know, everybody's split on this. I find the community split on this. Lots of people talk, and if you mention competitive 30k, they literally, like, hackles. Like, I, I imagine a cat that turns into a werewolf, and you're shunned immediately. Where, on the other hand, you have these players that like to play to win in, like, competitive games, and, <clears throat> you know, they hate the idea of fluffy games, right? So you definitely have both. And then you have us in the middle where I definitely love to play those competitive games, but on the other hand, like, I see this as a very fun uh, right of war that I can use, but I would hate to, like, bring it just to a fun game and then literally have his Death Star sit back in a Spartan or have his, like, Scoria with a bunch of guys sit back and not do anything the whole game and he literally just, like, throws meat shield after meat shield after meat shield, everything ahead of me so I can't kill that unit because then it becomes a really boring game because then he's not actually playing the game to win. He's playing the game for me to lose, which isn't technically how the game should be played. Beer, so, beer and pretzels, Warhammer, I'd be throwing everything I could at... at uh, yeah, at you, and, and that's right? exactly what we're doing but, here, right? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. um, so, I mean, I really do like this Rite of War. I really, really do. Like, the, the, the Seekers are awesome. Running them as troops, like, you never get to do that. Like, how much fun is that? running these squads that are so good and are and with the plus one benefit to 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 wound or armor penetration rolls, right? And then what else do they get? They get another benefit now that I Fire Wings um <clears throat> hatred characters. Hatred characters or hatred that unit. Um that's really good, right? But on the other hand, you know depending on your opponent, bring this, you know, knowing that the opponent like play the right opponent, and then you'll have a blast. You both will probably have a blast playing this, playing this game. Um, units, yeah. Let's go through the units. Now so yeah, okay. 
Yep. Yeah. So inner circle knights. So these are the guys that uh, you've seen before. Their rules were kind of out there. Yeah, they um, teased them. They teased them. Yeah. So uh, they're terminators, cataphracti. They all get plasma casters and the tyrannic great swords and the plasma. So I, I'll just stop right here and I'll say the one thing that I like and don't like about the Dark Angels is they ha have so many rules that are different from all the other legions, right? Because the first bunch of legions and halfway through, most of the legions are all the same. And then you started getting like Mechanicum, who was very different. You started getting, um, you know, uh, what, are, what are they called? The, the Talons of the Emperor, which are different. Yeah. Um, so Dark Angels are kind of like that. You'll have all these new weapons that your opponent will not know what they are unless they've read this in detail. Because if you skim it, you're not going to know what they are. So, warning, don't take advantage of your opponents, right? Let them know what your units do. Let them know that these Terminators can overwatch because no Ketafracta Terminator, other than the Death Guard, can overwatch and these guys can, right? Like, don't be that guy that sits there and is like, oh, 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 I can overwatch with my Ketafracta Terminators and I reroll those like plasma shots, right? So, that said, um, Plasma Caster, 12 inch range, Strength 4, AP 2, Assault 2, which is amazing, Ignore cover, and then plasma flame is you can reroll your Overwatch attacks. So these guys are, um, are they a specific Scion? They're not, uh, right? Uh, it's uh, <laughs> sorry, maybe I, I got lost there. Um, plasma caster, yeah, special rules are stubborn adamantium. Will order exemplars? It's in there. It's in the order exemplars. Um, so order exemplars as, as a special rule is when an inner, inner circle knight synobium is selected before play has begun as part of legions of Stardis, a single option from the scions of the, you can say that one because I hecatonistica uh, special rule must be selected for the unit. So these are the these are the, that second list that we went through. Uh, so you have to pick one of those. But what about the other scion? But uh, the and they so they get that for no points cost. So you don't have to pay that that points cost, but you. They're not sign of, of the Deathwing. So, but they're all characters too. So it says order preceptor infantry character, order Cenobites infantry character. Yeah. So, so you that means you can them... buy them. <laughs> and I think you would have to buy that per, on a per model basis. Yeah. Let's let's look at that here. Hexagrammaton. Um, independent character with a special room may select a single option for for twenty five points. So you could buy it for them. Or a character. So it depends which one you want to buy it. But what if you wanted to buy it Stormwing? So a model with a special rule yeah. and all models in the unit, so you would only have to buy it for one, can make snapshots of skill, skill two. two. And you get to reroll. Yeah. Right? So But again, you have five models and you would have to pay twenty five points per model. Well no, you only need one. Uh, it says a model with this special. Oh, and all models. Yeah, model yeah, and okay, unit. Yeah. 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 So you would only need to buy one. It can be anyone. It doesn't have to. Be I guess the it depends on which one you're picking because some, right. some of them are Because some of them only like are the specific. Model. I mean, yeah. you could buy it like all of them could have the, you know, Deathwing. You so, know what? That's, that's a. Ooh, but that's, that's an expensive one, right? That, well, that's scary. Yeah. But the Overwatch one is scary. Yeah. Because right? you could take it for 25 extra points. You could still add an additional five guys for 45 points a piece. So that's a 10 man squad. They all can Overwatch. They ignore. They reroll their Overwatch and they reroll the hits and they Overwatch on Blitzkill two. Yeah, nobody um, wants to charge that you. No, and they have Blitzkill <laughs> four, so they hit on threes when normally. So that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Right. Um, and Amantium Will is great. Stubborn is great. Um, they still get the other rule, one of them for free. So I mean, like, I don't know. I, I don't think there's one that I would be like yes. This one is better than others. I mean, the plus one attack on any turn, which it is charged, works really, really good. So again, good, you just stand right? there and you're like, charge me, come at me, bro. Yeah, charge me, right? <laughs> so like you come out of your Spartan, let's say with this unit, you charge, you kill whatever you charge. And then if they decide to charge you, they're going to get hurt because mm -hmm. you're going to overwatch, you're going to reroll, and then plus one attack is, is really, really good. Let's say if you decided to do the Icon of Resolve, it is great. I mean, there's lots of other ones that are that are really good too. So, um, yeah, you, you have customization I mean, options right. for this. And, uh, and I mean, let's say you're fighting. Um, uh, let's say you're fighting <sighs> demons or something. Maybe you buy the 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 breaker of witches, right? So you have adamantium will, and you can reroll again. Can then roll you go back to dice. that designer's note, though. You're supposed to be <laughs> supposed I'm, to be. But, but I mean, like, like you know, let's say you're 
you know, playing um, beer and pretzels game. Go ahead, man. <laughs> well, no, but but let's say we're playing uh, 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 what you call it, a campaign where you're fighting demons, right? You're fighting word bears and demons. Yeah, you're gonna bring your witch killers, and he's gonna bring guys that can kill dark angels, right? So, <clears throat> absolutely, you have one of these squads that's terrifying to the demons, right? Mm-hmm. Tyrannic greatswords have instant death, right? So, yeah. like, these guys are the killers against demons, yeah. right? And in case you didn't like the Tyrannic greatswords because they're AP3, you can exchange those for Thunder Hammers for, for free. free. <laughs> so, uh, definitely mix and match here. Yeah. I probably would take, I like, a couple Thunder, Thunder Hammers. Hammers. Oh, my God. Yeah. The models are so good. These models are amazing. I love what they did. They're not cheap. 45 points isn't cheap, but it's not crazy expensive. Um, the one change, if anybody notices, the preceptor only has one wound. So it, oh, did he, he used to he have? He used two? to have two, okay. and I a hundred percent he did because we checked this. Yeah. Um, he used to have two. Now he has one. So kind of weird that they kind of scaled him down. But yeah. I mean, maybe I mean, they play tested. Like, then this guy's a baby centurion. <laughs> he is weapon skill six is is great, yeah. right? Two attacks. Um, I mean, they don't get an extra attack for any you multiple don't. weapons so, and things like that. But. Like a lot of the, a lot of like the, mm. even the elite unit Terminator, uh, like sergeants have like three attacks. You only get two, but yep. you have the option to buy dis- digital lasers on them. So the other thing too is he can attack. have, so, so look at this though. He can have a grenade launcher. Okay. Grenade harness. Yeah. Grenade harness. Right. Um, Stacia shells. But see, it doesn't say that. See, this is the thing. So station shells may be taken on models with the Legion of Studies Dark Angel Special equipped with a grenade launcher, twin link grenade launcher, or missile launcher. So does the grenade harness have a grenade launcher? I don't think so, because I think the grenade harness is its own special rule. Yeah, it gives you assault grenades. Yeah, I think so. So I don't actually think you can buy it. But like, you, like, you actually do have to shoot it, though. Like, you have to, like, rule, shoot oh, it you? eight inches. Yeah. Huh. A grenade harness has to be shot for you to, like, get assault So grenades. then maybe it is a grenade launcher? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. We'd have to look. But either way, digital lasers on him too, which is good. Uh, we went over the plasma caster and the order exemplar. So overall, yeah. really good unit. I, I really, really like them. Amazing models. Definitely like a must run in an army because of just just how they look too. Yeah. So I, I am I am kind of surprised that we didn't see them as like a an optional, maybe taken as like a troop choice in any of those rights of war. That's they're, right. They're an elite choice. <clears throat> That's right. Yeah. That's right. You're you're right. I haven't I didn't see that anywhere. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we have Deathwing Companion Detachment. So this will take us about 45 minutes to an hour to go through these guys. <laughs> so these guys are actually in HQ. Uh, weapons go five. Uh, your sergeant's got two wounds. They have two attacks apiece. So these guys are um, Artificier Armored, so two plus, uh, two plus armor save, close combat veteran type unit. Um, <clears throat> so these guys, uh, only the Oath Bearer is a character. Uh, they have Artificier Armor. Tyrannic Grape Sword or Calibanite Warblade. So your choice. Uh, Bolter, Bolt Pistol, Fragging, Crack Grenades. And the Sergeant has a Refractor Field, so 5 plus invulnerable. Uh, Chosen Warriors, so everybody can uh, accept challenges and issue challenges. Uh, Scions of the Deathwing Special Rule, Death Sworn Companion Special Rule, Deathwing Retinue Special Rule. Uh, so dedicated transport options for these guys are Rhino, Land Raider Proteus. <clears throat> so you can take an additional five points. Uh, so these guys come in at 150 points base, uh, and the additional guys are 30 points each. So there's no discount for taking additional models in this That's unit. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. They can all take. They can take melt bombs as a squad for 25 points. So again, the more models you buy, I guess the cheaper per point per model mm-hmm. the uh, melt bombs are. Uh, they can exchange their Greatsword or Calibanite Warblade for a Power Fist for five points. So that's pretty cheap Power Fist upgrade. Yeah, that, that's great. Yeah. yeah, five points for a Power Fist. You have a couple of Power Fists. Pfft, yeah. Perfect. And, and it's mix and match, right? So you can do it yeah. as many times as you want. Um, any model can exchange their Bolter for a Combi Weapon, Plasma Pistol, and uh, Cytherian Pattern Aegis. 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 Yeah. For 10 points. Uh, so combi weapon, 10 points. Um, and again, <laughs> this is any model. And this is what you would take a combi grenade launcher. And come to think of it, like any tactical sergeant, grab him a combi weapon and give him that stasis grenade upgrade. Just so that you're like every single unit you have has that stasis grenade because that's so powerful. Yeah, it is. It is. So throw throw one combi weapon into onto one guy in this squad and... Uh, 
uh, and yeah, and reap the benefits. I mean, you can only use it once, I think, right? I think combi grenade launchers can be used Are all the time. Yeah, every turn. Yeah, you're right. It's like combi vol- volkites, I think you said, and and combi grenade launchers can be used multiple times. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I do have it. The one shot right ones are like the plasma melta, and I'm not even sure. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so yeah, you're right. No grenade launcher is definitely not a one use. So melta, uh, melta flamer and plasma are one use. Grenade launcher and volkite are not one use. So yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> So ten if points. a ten for ten points, yeah. Well, I think you have to pay again, right? Don't you? Do you have to pay twice? Would you pay? What do you mean twice? You would you would pay ten points for the combi weapon, then you pay five points for the stasis. That's right. Yeah, which yeah. is fifteen points is is well worth the stasis shells. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And on any unit that you could buy it for. Yep. I I, I think. So. Uh, okay, so a Dark Angels uh, Legion Praetor, uh, which is part of the Deathwing Companions Force Organization chart choice. Oh, sorry, if if a Dark Angels Legion Praetor, which is part of the Deathwing Companions Legion Force Organization chart, has a jump pack, then the Deathwing Companion Detachment may also be equipped with jump packs for 15 points per model. Uh, can no longer select dedicated transport. So this is pretty pricey. They, they are getting pretty expensive. I mean, That's if right. you wanted a 10-man unit... Uh, with jump packs, that's 450 points. Yeah, that's pretty very expensive. I mean, they, they do have two plus armor, so it is artificer, yeah, right? So, um, they all have AP3 weaponry, some of them may have a couple of power fists, like these guys, and they have refractor. Oh, only the oath, oath bearer, sorry, has a refractor yeah, field. Only the one guy. So, um, but they're good, like five weapon skill, like even 450 points, like that's a lot to put it into perspective, but man, like to put it into perspective. That is um, very similar to the points cost of a unit of Palatine Blades for Emperor's Children if you give them jump packs and you give them Artificer Armor and you start equipping them with things like Phoenix Spears. So that they're they're in that same ballpark points-wise. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, the rules reflect why. So, now, my personal opinion is I think that Palatines are slightly overpriced. Yes. So, again, these guys might be in the same ballpark where they're mm-hmm. eh, maybe a little bit. But let's, but let's talk about this, though. So they, they automatically get the Scion of Deathwing. Right, so they have they're all scions of the Deathwing, right? So they all have that rule. It doesn't specify that one person has it. They all have scions of the Deathwing, yeah. which is an infantry model with this special rule. Sorry, a model with the special rule rerolls the first fail to hit roll of any phase while engaged in combat. So not just a character. Everybody in that squad yeah. has that rule. So that's really good. The other rule is a Death Sworn Companions. So Death Sworn Companions means. Any model with the independent special character rule that joins the unit of Death Sworn, so if an independent character joins them, cannot be targeted by use of precision shot or precision strike special rule. So you can't just choose to kill that independent yep. character. In addition, these guys automatically pass lookout sir tests that are called to make, right? So, I mean, I definitely remember a few times where I have a Primarch with one wound because I've taken a beating and I need that lookout sir and you fail it. And you're like now making a two plus armor save that's basically win or lose the game, right? Yeah. So in this case, like you auto pass it, which is pretty nice, right? It's a neat, it's a nice rule. It's again not overpowered, but it definitely can come into play. Um, the next option is making them terminators. Yeah. So if the Praetor, so just like the other rule, has a terminator armor, you can exchange your war gear here for basically a set of Terminator armor of the same type. So if he has Cataphracti, they can be Cataphracti. If his Tartars, they can be Tartars. You gotta match him. Right, you gotta match him. So <clears throat> in this in, in this case, um, so they all have a Terminator armor of any type uh, for 15 points. So again, it's 45 points, which again is the same points as any other Terminator um, with a Combi Bolta Calibonite Warblade. So, so now they have their 45 point Terminators with five weapon skill, the sergeant has two wounds for 45 points, which is actually pretty well um, costed. Uh, you can give him a combi plasma, combi melta for seven points, or a combi grenade launcher with stasis frag shells for 12 points. So it's forcing you to pay that extra five points, mm-hmm. right? But this is really good. Like seven points and then 12 points is really, really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that's standard, but... And then again, you can upgrade your Warblade for uh, the greatsword. For free, a Tyrannic Greatsword, Parfist for five points, or 
a thunder hammer for free. Yeah, I don't really so, get that. <laughs> okay, I, I do actually get it. I was thinking about this and I get it. So why? A lot of times you have to pay extra for a thunder hammer and people don't because it doesn't have as many benefits or it's the same points as a chain fist and people are like, well, why would you choose a thunder hammer no, or no, a no. chain fist? Right? The thunder hammer is the same <laughs> as a power fist. It just has concussive. No, usually a thunder hammer is more expensive, is it not? It's more expensive. That's right. Same points wise as a chain fist. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people will choose to take chain fists because over... you get the extra exactly. penetration. It's because more, they're more universally right? more beneficial so than. I like this cap. because a thunder hammer is very close to a power fist, but Dark Angels and Deathwing are all about thunder hammers. If you know anything about like 40k Dark Angels, it's always thunder hammers and storm shields, and. This is why I love it, because I am never going to give these guys a power fist. I'm going to give them a thunder hammer, and they're going to look so freaking cool. Um, I mean, maybe model-wise, if you don't have it, you have to pay for that power fist, because you have it on the model. But I will make sure to hunt down all these thunder hammers and put it on there. So, I, I, think, I think maybe that was the intention, mm -hmm. is that... Unless they meant you get a power fist for free, and then a thunder hammer, five points, but I don't think so. I think definitely, like you're getting that Thunder Hammer for free and you're going to be running your squad with Thunder Hammers, which is awesome. I, I love that they did that. I love that they're encouraging you to play fluff because Deathwing are Thunder Hammers and clearly the Tyrannic Greatswords. So right. um, I like that. I mean, I'm you You would never run a Power Fist. It doesn't make sense point-wise, but your model has to have it, right? So put a Thunder Hammer on that model and it'll look awesome. Yeah. So also, if you want to uh, exchange your combi bolter and warblade, you get twin light, uh, twin lightning claws for free as yeah, well, which is nice. I mean, like again, like we're talking about an expensive unit here, so to get these kind of these options without additional points cost <coughs> it, it's is really nice. nice. Yeah. It's nice to, so you can you have the options. You can you can get the variety in your units, and uh, and I mean you're already paying a hefty price for these guys, so. You know, not yeah. like having to pay 20 points more for one guy with lightning claws is really nice. Yeah. And uh, then the, you can get a grenade harness for 10 points. Yeah. Um, Deathwing Terminator Champion. Num uh, companion. Detachment. Companion numbering five or fewer models may take a Land Raider. Uh, may not take a Rhino. I mean, that's kind of weird to specify makes because sense. you can't go into Rhino, but yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, this is one that's kind of weird. Uh, Deathwing Retinue. So a Deathwing Champion Attachment may be chosen as a retinue for a Praetor. So that makes sense. Uh, or Legion Special Character with a Warlord or Legion of Studies Dark Angel Special Rule. And may not be taken as part of an army on their own. Um, so you can you actually have to buy them as a retinue. Yeah. Right? They take up a single four-sword chart with the Dark Angel Praetor and may be deployed with the Praetor. But once deployed, they act... Um... Oh, no. No. They may not leave voluntarily leave the Deathwing Companion detachment. So, um, this is like a retinue. You can't run them on their own. I mean, if you run two Praetors or special characters, like you can have two of these squads if you want, but it's definitely like, you know, they're Deathwing Companions and that's that's what you run. Mm -hmm. um, the Pattern Aegis. So this is a really, really interesting one. So this is 10 points upgrade for any model and they can exchange their Bolter for one of these. Now, these models don't exist. Okay? Are they not part of the... Uh, do they not release these models? No, I don't think so. No, no, because they released the Inner Circle Knights. Oh. Right, but not the Deathwing No, they they definitely had Deathwing Companion. They did? Models teased, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, are they coming out or are they out? Well, I don't think they've been released yet. Okay. But there are models now. 30k models. Deathwing. I'm looking it up right now as we speak. Okay, so you look that up. Yeah, you read <laughs> this. Really I'll read up. this. Um, okay, so it could um, it can be used in one of two ways. It either provides the bear with a four plus in vulnerable save against shooting attacks and five plus in melee, or it can be deployed. Uh, controlling player chooses to deploy the Aegis at the end of any of their own movement phases. Uh, the unit must be deployed on the table uh, and not embarked upon a transport vehicle. And as long as two models in the unit have this uh, Aegis, uh, uh, while deployed, the entire unit gains 4 plus in vulnerable save against shooting attacks and 5 plus in melee. And any models engaging the unit assault have their initiative reduced by 1. Uh, so I'm noticing a trend that Dark Angels really like to 
mess around with your initiative. And as an Emperor's Children player, I really hate that. I hate yes. that a lot. Yeah. Uh, so, however, while deployed, uh, the model equipped with the Aegis uh, can neither make shooting or melee attacks. And you can choose to end it at the uh, start of any of your own subsequent movement phases. So why wouldn't you use it, I guess? You can't shoot, right? Well, you can't... Uh, the model's equipped with it, but you kind of give up your bolter for it. Yeah, you can't shoot so, or make melee attacks. Um, that's right, you can't make melee attacks. But, I mean, you could move, deploy it, and then undeploy it at the beginning of your next moving phase. Move, deploy it, yeah, and so on. I mean, it gives your entire unit a... Four plus in vulnerable saves against shooting and five plus in combat. That's right. That's right. So, so okay. So it the, turns them into Terminators. So the models will be out. Yeah. But not the Terminator models. So the teaser that they had was the non artificer, non -artificer, artificer ones. armor ones. So, so you know what? Honestly, maybe you can use the inner circle knights. And if you model them appropriately and paint them appropriately, you could probably use them as your Deathwing Terminator companions because they're just painted, uh, you know, bone white and black, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And, um, so you could probably do that. I mean, they, they, they're amazing models. Like, those shields are just um, unreal, which is, I'm assuming, what the, the Scyther on the Aegis is. Yeah, so it's it's really, really cool. Um, definitely uh, going to grab a set as soon as they're out. So, yeah. All right, so what do you think of these? Like, they're, they're good, um, right? Yeah, it's kind of disappointing that you can only take them as, as a, a retinue, retinue. Yeah. You know, I think it would have been cool if you could, like, take them, you'd, like, these guys could be, as long as you don't have, like, Lionel Johnson in your army list, uh, or, you know, like, special character, special character, whatever, you could make these guys your HQ unit. They are an HQ unit. They are an HQ unit, but, but you, you can can't only take them by yourself. Them a, yeah. yeah. So, like, I think that would have been kind of cool. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I like them. Like I said, I think they're, like, they are, they are expensive. They have a lot of options. They have a lot of really great options. Um, but yeah, they're up there in points cost. They're they're kind of similar to like Palatines. I think Palatines are a little bit overpriced. So. I, I mean, I think if you ran them base, right? They uh, still have like they have an AP three. All have power weapons that are plus one strength, right? So they're war blades, Calvinite war blades, um, or they're great swords, right? You can mix and match. They have an extra attack. So when you're charging, that's four attacks. They all have the Deathwing rule. Their weapon skill five. So if you ran them just base at thirty points. You didn't really give him much else. Maybe you give him a couple of the Aegises um, and that combat weapon, sure. And consider you're probably still going to have a Praetor beat stick yeah. hanging around so, with I mean, that squad also. That's, that's 330 yeah. points, for example. If you want to give him melt the bombs great. Um, but for 350 points, to have 10 guys that are Artificer Armor, Weapon Skill 5, 4 attacks on the charge, re-rolling one attack each. each. Like, that's really good. That's actually not that expensive, right? You could arm a few with Power Fists, and then, or just give them melta bombs, and then you don't have to worry about those vehicles, right? So it, yeah. it's actually really, really good. And then with melta bombs, you also get to reroll your hit, right? So, <laughs> like, it's kind of dumb, but I mean, so you can charge those knights if you're up against them, and um, yeah, he's gonna hit you first and kill a couple, but you still have an invulnerable save, and then you can go in and, you know. I, unless I'm misreading the, it's, it's, the it's rule. It's engaged in a challenge. Or oh, it is only in the challenge, It's engaged eh? in a challenge, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so that doesn't apply. Okay. Anyways, but, <clears throat> I mean, it's still, they're still really good, right? I think base, or I think if you're, so it's, you're either running them like that. Um, the jump packs would be cool, but I don't know if it's something I would run. On the other hand, though, like the Terminators are 45 points now, um, which is basically a, a good point for a terminator and then you can give them a bunch of thunder hammers uh for free basically so you have 45 point thunder hammer terminators with four plus and vulnerable because you make them kind of fracti and they're still really good so i i don't think they're crazy expensive yes you have to run them as a as a whatchamacallit um companions i guess the i retinue but i think they're worth it i like them mm -hmm. a lot uh fire wing yeah, Firewing are the three-man squads for 150 points, so they're 50 points a piece. Really expensive. Mm -hmm. um, they get this awesome blade that's plus one strength, AP three. It's called a charge blade. Um, talk about their profile. Profile. Okay, well, let's talk about the profile. Weapon skill five, two wounds, five initiative, three attacks. So they're centurions. 
<laughs> they're like, yeah. Or better Centurions. No, Centurions have three attacks. They're better than Centurions because they have leadership 10. That's right. They have leadership 10. <laughs> like... uh, three plus save, but they're they're really, really good. Um, they all... Th- this is one thing that's kind of weird. Well, let's talk about the, the Charge Blade. Okay, so yeah. the Charge Blade is... Uh, charge Blade, uh, at the start of a fight sub-phase, the controlling player may choose to activate the cells. If this is done, it affects all models in the unit with Charge Blades. Affected units gain the Rending and Get Hot special rule. So if you're fighting Terminators, um, you can do that and you can get Rending. I mean, uh, you also get a Needle Pistol, which I don't actually know what a Needle Pistol does. Apothecaries have it. Um, uh, but it... Um, it's like Poison, I think. It's a Poison Pistol. But it's still a Pistol. Yeah. So you get plus one attack. So they have four attack space. Five, uh, on, five the on the charge. Yeah. Is really, really plus nice. Plus one strength, AP3. Plus one strength, AP3 is great. They can wipe out most things. Uh, shroud bombs yeah. are really nice. So if you want to charge them, you have to take a leadership test, I think it is. Yeah. Um, they have this uh, Enigmatic Pattern Jump Pack, which I believe uh, they give... So it gives them five plus cover save. Okay. Um, and cannot be a target of Overwatch attacks if they choose to activate the jump packs in the assault phase. Yeah. So depending who you're charging, a lot of times you want the extra distance, right? For your movement. For your movement, yeah. Yeah. But um, if you don't need it, and, or if the unit has a shit ton of, uh, you know, Overwatch that you don't want to bear, yep. then maybe you use it in the assault Fly phase. Accordingly. That's right. And then you can, uh, they can't Overwatch against you. I mean, 5 plus cover is great. Um, now they so gain... they have the signs of the Firewing automatically yeah. well right but, but it's pretty weird so this is where i think it's yeah. kind of weird so the fire wing is hatred characters yeah but then they also have hatred characters. hatred characters special rules so yeah they just they, to make they, sure that you didn't miss out on that they, they like, have hatred characters. hate them extra yeah so like uh they also have scout that's right and they have scout which is good yeah which is great um and then you can buy them a gray grenade launcher uh, one guy with yeah. stasis frag and crack grenades, which you probably would. I think it's totally worth it. Um, I mean, it's a little bit more expensive than like the combi weapon version of. of well, that, but... I don't know though because they have five initiative. Yeah, true. Right? But initiative They're one prob- is yeah because stasis grenades are initiative one. It's not minus one initiative. Yeah. Right. So, um, it's probably worth it actually, uh, to buy. I mean, you lose the attack, but, um, well, no, it just says you take, so you don't replace anything. So, yeah, you just got it. Yeah, I, I would. I, I mean, they're pretty expensive for three models um they sure are there's no option to increase their squad that's size. right so that, that's it yeah right. and then you do have to consider like while you get a five plus cover save all the time they only have three plus arm in their toughness four that's right so and a, a crack two missile is nice but a crack missile can take them out pretty that's right quickly, that's right so, so. um th- they're a cool unit yeah. I, I think they're definitely interesting you get them as a they're a fast attack choice but you can unlock them as a troop with one of your rights of war mm-hmm. um yeah, it, they're cool. It, it's nice to have options. That's right. It is. So. And and again, like, hundred fifty points a model is expensive, um, but they're basically like centurions that have extra rules because yeah. centurions fifty points base. Yeah. Right. So you're technically getting a discount because you get all these upgrades for them. You get jump packs. You get all this other stuff. So yeah. it's they're nice. And I they're, definitely they're restricted in their options, so now, you can't spend more than 150, 170 right. points on this. No, I'm so. not gonna like put my foot in my mouth. They actually do not have models for these guys. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. I don't <laughs> but, think so. I mean, you could make your own, right? It wouldn't be hard to to make your own in the meantime. It's only three models. Yeah. So. Uh, maybe pretty easy. Put some nice jump packs on them, and yeah. Okay, Dreadwing. So these guys are the other guys that were leaked before as well. Interrupters. Interrupters. This is the one that you have a hard time. Dreadwing saying. interruptors. It just doesn't it. make sense. The the <laughs> R the, the multiple <laughs> RP they all look the same. Yeah. Um, okay, 160 points for five, yep. and then 30 points each. So you do pay 10 point premium. Um, I mean, your sergeant does have an extra attack and leadership. Um, he's a character again. Uh, these guys. Do, they do start with the Scion of the Dreadwing special rule. So they may um, <clears throat> they move through terrain automatically for four inches and reroll fail dangerous terrain tests. These guys are the guys that come with plasma burners. Uh, for every five models, you can have the incinerator with suspensor web. The suspensor web, remember, if used, halves the range of your weapons, so then it would be nine inches. But if you're using these guys, like I'm imagining you're putting them in a drop pod or something. And yeah, I mean, the other the other weapon's 12-inch range, so mm-hmm. you're going to be getting pretty close anyways, right? That's right, that's so. right. Um, and then the Prefectus can also buy up to three Phosphax bombs. 
So this is your true Dreadwing, like, Death Guard rule. You can buy those Phosphax bombs and do a lot of damage. And they're stubborn. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, we're not going to go much through them. That's it. You guys know what they are. Um, you can buy them a Land Raider only uh, as a dedicated transport. Um, I mean, I think you can put them in anything you want because there's no restrictions there. But if you're buying them a dedicated transport, they have to be a Land Raider. Um, yeah. So, I, I, I think they're good. They're great. You you don't have two close combat weapons with them. They only get the... They're not uh, really... Uh, they're elites, but they're not really veterans. No. Yeah. No, no. But Aside from their leadership, which is like 10. It's 9 great. and 10, yeah. It's yeah, amazing. But they're, they will rip apart uh, Terminators. They'll rip apart... Oh, yeah. Just the amount of AP2 shots <laughs> that's right. they can put that's down. That's right. So is. they'll rip apart elite units. This is like um, your 1-2 combo, where you'd come down with your regular machine killer veteran squad and pop open a transport with your melted guns. And yeah. then these guys you'd also come down on that same turn and then just wipe that unit and out. unlike plasmas like these guys output potentially so much more yeah. like ignore cover is amazing um i mean yeah these guys are definitely scary unit yeah. definitely a scary unit expensive 30 points is expensive yeah but for that much plasma for that much plasma i i, I think they're worth it yeah and phosphax bombs yeah <laughs> Okay, the weird one. Oh, man, this... Okay. okay, so this thing's going to look cool. It's the Iron Man... Excindio Class Battle Automata. For 300 for points. For 300 points. Yeah. Uh, so... I would, This one, was anybody expecting this thing? No, I don't even know. If, was this ever leaked? Like, what the hell is yeah. this? But um, I don't think I'm going to go, like, crazy into every single thing for this thing. It's got a lot um, of options. It's got a, it's that's right. a lot Six, of unique so, rules. So different things. Six wounds. It's basically a Mechanicum, like, big battle automata. Yeah, what are those? Right? Castellax? <laughs> well, no, I think it's bigger than a Castellax. Is it? <coughs> well, I don't know. Toughness 7? What's the, what's the, the big Thanatar. one? Thanatar. Thanatar, yeah. And it's got four wounds only. That's right. It only has four wounds, so I think. But it's toughness eight, and this thing's toughness seven. Yeah. That's why I was thinking Castle S is yeah. toughness seven as well. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's big, like this thing. I, I don't know. I don't know what it's supposed to look like, but six wounds is a lot. Yeah. Four attacks. It comes with two dreadnought close combat weapons, two manipulator arms, which are also extra attacks at initiative one with shred plus one strength, severing cut. Which doesn't say what Severing Cut does here, but I, don't, I think I, it's, I don't like that they didn't put those rules. Yeah, in here. but it's like an extra. It, it, it's, it's like, like if you take wounds. a wound, then you have to it cause like a. Yeah, wound. but I think it's on the same model, or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Um, it it comes with like two combine bolters where you which you can change to for ten points to either grab guns, both of them. Awesome. <laughs> twenty points iron irad cleansers and uh, twenty points for plasma repeaters. Which is weird because plasma repeater is not a weapon other like a mechanicum weapon. Yeah. So it's a dark angel weapon, but um, it it makes sense, I guess. Our refractor field, hatred, everything. It has the shackle artifica, with basically uh, gives it a bunch of the rules like fearless and amanti will fire protocols, machine creatures, and cybernetic resilience, which you find in the mechanicum book. Hatred, everything, and vengeful rage. Vengeful rage is the weird one. Basically, if you take a wound. Um, you roll a d6 on a 1, it basically becomes one of those units that just kills everything. It has its own rules, so if it has, if it moves, it moves toward the nearest unit, friend or foe, it attacks it, you can attack it, and, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, it has this kill switch that you can, so a Forge Lord with the Legion of Studies Dark Angel special rule, you can buy for 5 points, and then at any point in time, um, you can inflict D6 wounds with no saves of any kind, any uh, allowed if you're within 12 inches of this uh, unit, um, and then it, it basically dies. Or you know, if you don't do enough point you, wounds, then it doesn't die. But the idea is that you, if it turns on you, you can you can kill it. I mean, you would be babysitting this guy until yeah, it like turns you technically on you don't need, but you technically don't need like a forge lord to run this guy. You don't, right? You so, just need a Forge Lord or Tech Marine to take that. But, but it does have like the fire protocols and stuff, so you probably want something that's able to control it and, yeah. and things like that, so you can actually do stuff. I mean, it has pretty nasty weaponry that you can buy it, so you can exchange the, one of the weapons for like the Phosphex Canister Launcher, which is basically like um, what uh, the, like the Phosphex Launcher on your Leviathan. Leviathan, but it's only it's one only shot. Heavy one, but that's you can right. use it. 
you can use it six turns right um it has like a nerve induction shredder which is poison four plus heavy six ap2 ignore cover um which is really good right like you just like shred units it has five ballistics considering it's five ballistics it's on twos yeah um now the one thing i it was kind of weird so it says and this battle of the matter may exchange both a dreadnought close combat weapon and a manipulator arm for one of the following so does that mean you can exchange both your i think so it so says this redu- reduces models' base attacks by one. Yeah, so, so I think you'd probably, if you wanted to replace two of them, you would reduce your attacks to two. So you would have two attacks, but then you wouldn't have the manipular arm. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, and then it has the pulse cannon, which is neat. It, it's cool. It's like 24-inch range, strength 8 AP2, heavy 3 lance, shock pulse. Which is uh, like the Venator, secure and Venator effect. Oh, that that's what it is? I think so, yeah. Where you, If you get oh. a penetrating result, then they have to snap fire. Okay, well that's pretty neat. Yep, that's cool. That's a that's a nice rule. It's it's a nice rule to like. I mean, it's lock. only strength eight. Well, okay, but <laughs> so, it's also but heavy has three, lines. and he's supposed to still five. Uh, we were talking about the shock pulse weapon, right? And uh, how it shock pulse, yeah. Right. And then there's the gravitron flux projector, which is kind of like the um, grav flux bombard. That's right, but it's a template. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So, Torsion Crusher, I don't really know what that means. Uh, uh, so Graviton Collapse is like... Um, 3d6, right? I think that's the one where you take the strength test. Right. 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 And then uh, the Torsion Crusher is the 3d6 armor penetration. Right, right. But it does like double hull points for against Everything. vehicles. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, neat unit, different. Can't wait to see the model. Would probably buy one. We'd probably run it for funsies. The fluff behind is kind of cool too. Like it's a it's a old man of iron. Uh, so like the ancient a AI from Terra that they enslaved inside of a inside of like a battle automata. It's kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I mean this one kind of just really came out of left field. I mean, like I don't know. Like nobody expected this. Yeah. I, like yeah. this was not in any stories and nothing. It just it just is. It's just there. Yeah. It's yeah. just there. Yeah. But it works. Whatever. Kind of cool. A little Kinda... bit expensive. Yeah, but, but neat. Yeah. Causewayne. 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 Yeah. This guy's your guy, so... 200 points. Uh, seven weapon skill. Yeah. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, four wounds is awesome. Uh, four attacks. Initiative five. Yep. So he's got a bolter, bolt pistol, and the blade... And then the armor of Forest and the mantle of the champion. Uh, frag and crack grenades. He's an independent character, master of the legion, Deathwing. Um, precision strikes. And then a warlord. So if he's your warlord, he has the paladin of glory warlord trait, which I don't actually know what that does. Paladin of glory gives you plus one combat resolution bonus. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the blade. Let's talk about the blade. So this... This guy has plus two strength on the blade, AP one. Um, so that's really only useful against vehicles, but uh, plus two strength, melee two handed, master crafted, duelist triumph. So when in a challenge, all his weapon attacks have instant death special rule. Right. So you compare this guy to. Who do you compare him to? Ralderon. Uh, okay, I thought it wasn't going to be my first. Sevatar? Sure. Sure. True. Sevatar, well, yeah. Sevatar is a natural one, but I'm talking like Six Men, we're Karn. Talking, we're talking. Let's talk about the guy who's got rules, right? Six Men. Six Men, yes. Yeah. Well, <coughs> Six Men is tough because he's got Eternal Warrior. So he kind of like. He's so, the only one of the like best champions that, that has, has that, that rule, yeah. right? So, so if you look at the points cost for Corsman <coughs> and you look at the points cost for. Sigismund? I actually don't know what Sigismund's point cost is. Sigismund is 230 points. Okay. So, these guys are very similar in their rules. Mm-hmm. Plus two strength. They have strength six, AP one, two weapon. Yeah. Right? They both have a 200 master crafted sword. And yep. they both cause instant death and challenge. They both have four wounds. They both have weapon skill seven. Mm-hmm. They both have probably four or five attacks each. Right? Yeah. So, very similar. The only difference between the two of them... Is the Eternal Warrior. Is the Eternal Warrior. Yep. And so, Forge will clearly values that at about 30 points which i would pay any day of the week absolutely like any day of the week absolutely i would pay that so unfortunately um i mean you're comparing him to sigmund 
he doesn't stack up. But against every other guy, yeah. I think he's actually quite good. He, I actually think he's amazing. Because if you think about it, let's say he's fighting Abaddon. He kills Abaddon before Abaddon even gets a chance to strike. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, anybody that doesn't have an instant weapon, so Karn, um, Ralderon. I don't actually know Ralderon's rules, but I don't know if he has an instant death weapon. I'm not sure. Yeah, but either way, um, like he's really good because of that instant death in a challenge, right? So summon weapon skill is amazing. Um, f- initiative five in a challenge, he's Deathwing, so he rerolls a hit, and he has master crafted, so that's two misses that he's going to reroll. Like he's going to hit a bunch. If he's fighting another seven weapon skill guy, he still hits on threes. Yeah, right, right. So this like, is also a sword, so th- he's that's still right, got his right? master so, blade. So this guy is good i'm happy i'm really happy with his rules he's definitely what i would like to see i mean no eternal warrior but i i think that's something that they I should think, all have actually so that's or, or none, none of them should have that's right all or none. um i mean all or none i feel like then the instant death rule like then the guys with instant death trump and then causeway corswain or sigman would still be amazing because they instant death everybody else yeah. right but i think he's he's great um really good character um, can really do well against demons. Mechanicum with his strength six instant. Well, uh, we're talking uh, challenges is only instant death, so yeah. so actually not as good um, against those things. But as, I, as yeah, I thought. I'm pretty sure but, the the Sigismin has the same restriction as in challenges <laughs> yeah. where they cause that. Um, uh, the one thing that he does have going for him over Sigismin is that he's got a two plus, four plus, invulnerable save and the. Invulnerable save gets better in combat. And so it's up three, plus, three plus uh, against close so combat attacks. Sigismund's co- invulnerable <laughs> And it's not only a challenge. Oh yeah, it's all the time. It's all the time, in right? Combat. So when he's in combat, he gets, um, he gets three plus invulnerable, yeah. which which is amazing. And now it's probably won't lots of primarchs. Yeah, it it won't keep him, uh, probably winning the um, a matchup against Sigismund. Not Sigismund, but a, a lot of the other champions, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, we can compare him to Savitar because there's a, definitely a short story where they fought, and I'm pretty sure Corsman wasn't winning that fight. I, I'm i not sure if I know I, which one you're talking about oh, either, no? but I I don't doubt it. Like, Savitar is regarded as, like, uh, well, one it, of the was, it was like the lion and... I know that I, I know that there's one where Savitar fights Sigismund and Savitar wins because he cheats. Hmm. I believe that. And Sigmund is very he was upset. non-cheating. Yeah, yeah, he was upset about it. Yeah, I'm sure he would be. Yeah, um, yeah so overall, he's awesome. Um, I can't wait for the model. Um, yeah. I can't wait for the model. I, I'm a little sad that he didn't come out. So I hope they have, they'll have they have him soon because he's a model. He, I would love to run him. He's one of those guys that you want to run alongside the lion. Because in a lot of the stories, they're right next to one another. Like, they're the duo and, and it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marduk Cedrus. Yeah, so this guy, um, Dreadwing. Dreadwing character, um, not too bad and not too shabby. A little bit more expensive than uh, than Course Wayne at 220 points. Um, weapon skill 6, uh, 4 wounds as well. That's really nice. Um, he's got uh, a Plasma Burner, 3 Phosphex Bombs. He's got a Grenade Hardness, Regalia of the Shattered Scepter, and the Death of Worlds. Uh, so his special rules are Legion of Stars, Dark, uh, Dark Angels, Independent Character, Master of the Legion, uh, Silent Dreadwing, Ancient of War, and if he's your Warlord, then he uh, he has the Preceptor of the Shattered Scepter Warlord trait rather than rolling randomly. So that is, uh, if he's your Warlord, then a unit of Inner Circle Knights can be selected as part of his HQ choice using no additional force or, uh, slots in the force organization chart. Um, if this option is selected, then neither command squad nor Deathwing companion squad can be chosen for him. So as a warlord trait, I don't know if I really like that. Like you, you don't really get a warlord trait. You just get the option to take a unit as a, as a retinue. That's right. Yeah. It's kind of, I don't know, not that great in my opinion. Uh, anyway, so is uh, ancient of war special rule is that uh, at the start of the game, after deploying... This is more of like a Warlord trait, I think, than than his actual <laughs> Warlord trait. Uh, but after deployment, but before the first uh, game turn, controlling player um, selects a single faction from the allies in the Age of Darkness table, including either agents of the Emperor or Warmaster, that is represented in the enemy army. Both Marduk Cedras and any friendly units with Legion of Stardust Dark Angels that have more than half of their units uh, models within six inches of him 
gain preferred enemy against that faction uh, for the duration of the game. If Marduk uh, Cedrus is in reserve, this special rule has no effect. So this is like your army, your opponent's army includes um, an allied faction. Now we have preferred enemy against that faction. That's kind of cool. No, it can be it can be that unit too. It can be his main detachment as well. Oh yeah, it, it's oh, really, really weird. Oh, yeah. It's really weird the way it's worded. So you look at the chart of the like because it says after deployment the controlling player may select a single faction from that allies in the angels of darkness table so you just select one faction gotcha and then okay. you have preferred enemy against it yeah okay okay that's so even better than i that's way better yeah, right because a lot of players don't run allies yeah right yeah a lot of players don't run allies so yeah that, no that's that makes it even better yeah uh and definitely very unique and cool the regalia of the shattered scepter is uh, his suit of Cataphractite Terminator armor. Uh, so in addition to the standard rules for Cataphractite Terminator armor, uh, it allows its bear to automatically pass dangerous terrain tests. So it, It's nice. Yeah. right? He's Dreadwing, so he, is Dreadwing. he doesn't have to re-roll. He automatically passes it. Yeah. So. I mean, if you're going to run this guy, you're probably running that right of war, and like, yeah. all the tables are going to be difficult. Yeah, so, so remember, terrain, too, so. with that right of war, guys, like you get to pick a bunch of units, right? that you um what's what's the rule so you get to pick a bunch of units that are priorities and you get plus one to wound and armor pen against his priority targets no, and no, that's that's the firewing one the dreadwing one's oh, the that's dangerous firewing right, 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 right. Dangerous terrain, okay yeah. you're right you're right but in this case he gives them preferred enemy as long as more than half the unit's models are within him um that's a weird one i don't like that because you're going to be constantly counting models it should just be if you have one model but i get why they yeah, but like, you're, you're also going to get that for the rest of the game. Well, I think you have to continuously be there, right? Special more than half. So both them. him and any friendly unit within, with the Dark Angel special rule that have more than half the unit's models within him gain the preferred enemy's chosen faction special rule for the duration of the game. Oh, this is at the start of the game. Okay, so sorry. Okay, so let's go through this again. So at the start of the game, yeah. after deployment, but before the first turn, you pick a unit. A faction. Bo okay, you pick a faction. So both him and enemy friendly. Okay. So basically, the way you deploy, yeah. if you center like three units around him, all of them gain that. All of them gain enemy. that preferred enemy. Yeah. Kind of weird, to be honest. Yeah. Because then you can't. I it guess. Could be dangerous if you're uh, if you're bubbling a bunch of units around yeah. him, and your opponent's got a typhon and they just yeah. lob a big strength because then you can't also you him. can't deep strike a bunch of stuff either because yeah. if he's but it, it's still it's yeah still it, it's neat yeah. it's neat yeah uh okay so then we've uh we've gone through his uh terminator armor his uh weapon is the death of worlds uh it's <laughs> plus five strength ap2 uh melee unweldy and uh, Curse of Dead rule, World Special Rule. So it's it's like better than a Power Fist by a strength point. Yeah, but not strength 10. It's not strength 10. So let's be clear about that. It's not strength 10, so it can't insta-kill toughness 5 guys. No. But it's strength 9. So Because he's got strength 4 plus 5 right. strength makes him strength 9. Yeah. So, uh, so the uh, it, it counts as a sword for the purpose of mastery of blade. And uh, invulnerable saves taken against this uh, hits inflicted by this weapon are reduced by one. Uh, so a model with a four plus invulnerable save can only take a five plus invulnerable save. That's the, a very unique thing. Yeah, no, nothing so else has done that. In... He, he's still four wounds, four attacks. Yeah. Right. Like yes, his weapon's unwieldy, but it insta kills most things. So even when you look at him, he's pretty good. Yeah. Against other characters as well. And he gets three Phosphax bombs. Did we talk about that? Yeah. His three Phosphax bombs. Yeah. So, I mean, that's really good. Yeah. He's... Like, really, really good. At 220 points, I don't know. I'd probably still pick Corswing. I think so, too, for sure. Yeah. But if you're running, like, Dreadwing and, you know, you want a bunch of models. Like, okay, so let's go over this route. Like, what if my models are in a transport? And the whole transport's within six inches of him. Like, does he give them preferred enemy? I don't think so. Yeah, like, it's kind of weird. Yeah. It's kind of a weird rule. Ancient of War. Kind of a weird rule. But, uh, 
But I, I, I do like it. I do like him as as a as a mod, like as a character. He's not bad. He has his place. Both the characters are not like I know. There's other armies that you play and you'll never see some characters on the field. I can definitely see people running both of these. Sure. Yeah, right. Me too. And now for what everybody's been waiting for. The moment you've all been waiting for. Is it a Rocky and Bullwinkle reference there? Yep. <laughs> the Lion L. Johnson. So I love how the first thing you saw online is people posting a picture of him with the little circle saying this unit may only be taken as a tra- part of a traitor <laughs> yeah. faction army. Yeah. That was quite funny. I enjoy that. Um, clearly, it's not the tr- case, loyalist only. Um, but uh, yeah, he's pretty good so let's let's start with the points 460 points yeah okay so he's up there but not like crazy expensive who's more expensive than him i think horus and magnus magnus how much is russ i don't know i don't know i just know that some of them are like lore right 400 ish so i think he's like on the higher end but he is but yeah as he should be because he has, what, eight weapon skill? Five yep. bullet skill? So eight weapon skill is up there. Like, most of the Primarchs have seven. So that's fully half of the Primarchs have weapon skill eight or nine. Yeah, okay. So half of them have weapon <laughs> skill seven. That's right. Uh, strength seven. Which, which is, I don't understand. Which is, I don't understand either, actually. Like, they never in the stories talk about him being super strong. Yeah. But, whatever. Uh, toughness six. Six wounds. Seven initiative. So seven initiative is actually nice. Seven inches of, is amazing. Yeah, lots of Primarchs have six. Majority of them, I think, if not less. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't think many have some five, of them are but, sitting around five, but yeah, there's a lot of them have six. Six or yeah. seven, but seven is on the higher end. Five attacks is average. Yeah. Uh, ten leadership, two plus save. Okay, so a um, couple of things. So he's got the uh, uh, Leonine. Leonine. Uh, Leonine. Panoply. He's got cat armor. Yep. Uh, the... the, the whatever, lion, the Calibanite lion armor. Uh, lion sword or the wolf blade. So this is going to be interesting as we talk about later. Uh, the fusel, which is a shooting weapon. Um, little plasma thingy. Uh, frag grenades and stasis grenades. So he starts with stasis grenades. So these are interesting because, like, we talk about the, like, stasis grenades. Because who else can get stasis grenades? Yeah. So is this is this is it? this where they're is this them? where they are? Oh my goodness! Because if they if it is man, because if it is, amazing. then these stasis grenades are so good. So who who can get them? Who are we talking about? Was it the um? It was the. Is in that right of war? Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All so the stasis red wing. Yeah. Maybe equipped with stasis grenades. Okay, so the only reference to stasis grenades is in the lions, which is amazing. Yeah, so we'll get there. So we'll get there, but okay. And then special rules. So he's got the Primarch special rules. Sire of the Dark Angels, point of, uh, point of the blade, lion's collar? Collar, yeah. Absolute focus, very bulky, and Deathwing champions. Companions. Companions. Thank you. Sire of the Dark Angels... Okay, so he has a special rule where all friendly models with the Dark Angel special rule, of course, roll an additional d6 for morale checks and use the two lowest to decide the result. Also, any units with the Legion of Studies Dark Angel special rule within 12 inches of the lion add plus one to wound value used to determine which side has won close combat. It's weirdly worded. Like, you think they would just said plus one to combat resolution? Yeah. Right? So it's kind of weirdly worded, but... So, this combines a couple of rules. It combines a word bearer army-wide rule, and yeah. it combines, basically, plus one to combat resolution, which I think only a couple of armies out there get. Uh, so, but only within 12 inches of him. So you think this is awesome. I think this is only meh. You don't like it because you wanted something different. Maybe okay, so, something unique. Okay, so let's... But as that's far right. as utility goes... These are fantastic rules. <laughs> they are. You gain Legion of Stardis wor- uh, word bearers just for having Lionel Johnson in your army, and that's ma- that's amazing. Like that makes your your army so much more, um, uh, uh, what's the word, um, reliable when it comes to taking any type of leadership test. 
So the one thing, the one issue that I have with the lion is not that he's not good. It's that, I mean, we can talk about it later a little more, but this is the only rule that he gives, and that's it, to the army. Everything else is him. And we'll talk about it a little bit later, but I felt that maybe he needed more or different. And I'm not saying that it shouldn't have been reflected in his points or anything like that, but definitely I was a little disappointed with the Sire of the Dark Angel special rule. And maybe it's because it's just copying other people's rules. Maybe that's what it is. Because maybe if he had something unique, I would not even be thinking about this. It's just I feel like they're like, oh, we're going to give him this word bearer rule, which is good, but a lot of his units are stubborn. So, like, yeah, it's amazing with stubborn. It's amazing with stubborn. But, like, they have stubborn in leadership 10 or 9. Like, <laughs> you probably don't need the extra dice, right? So, um, anyway, so it's a really, they're really good rules. They really are. Um, the plus one to combat resolution, I think, is weird because how often are you going to have multiple combats that aren't with him within 12 inches of him? Yeah. Because he's fearless. So, how often is that going to happen? I don't know. Um, but it's still a good rule. Still a good rule. Yeah. Uh, point of the blade. Go ahead. This is your favorite rule. Uh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, you're right. Okay. After declaring a charge for Lionel Johnson and any unit that he's joined, the controlling player may choose to move eight inches, ignoring the, uh, the effects of difficult or dangerous terrain uh, instead of rolling for a charge normally. So this is an amazing rule. This is this rule is so good that I don't know how you properly associate a points cost to it. That's right. Because like if you think about it, let's say you run the lion in a transport. Okay, doesn't matter, Spartan, Charybdis, whatever you put him in. Um he moves six, disembarks six. So that's a twelve inch move, and then you have an eight inch automatic charge. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. So and you, you know a, that at the start right. of your turn. So there's very few Primarchs that can pull this off. Like Mortarian can get extra, right? Yeah, Mort Mortarian can pull off some big long charges That's right. too. But like you have twenty. But he's still got he's still got a random charge That's range. Right. But you have twenty inch twenty inch threat automatic threat range, and you don't have you don't roll. So basically, like if you're within eight, you just move eight. Or you can roll if you're over that. You know at the start of your movement phase if you're getting <coughs> combat. That's right. 100%. That's right. Or, you know, you can risk it for the 9 or 10 inch charge. Yeah. But like 8 inches is a long charge. Like that's well over average. Like 7 is over average if he had 7. But this is like well over Man, average. Man, if, 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 this, if this was like automatic 6 inch charge, it'd still be amazing rule. Yeah. Like this, this, this is just, I kind of hate it. I, like, like <laughs> it's a it, really good rule because yeah the the reason I hate it isn't because that he has it it's because I don't think that it's reflected in that in the four hundred sixty points maybe yeah. maybe yeah I mean because... like how many what, what how many points would you pay to have that ability a lot would you pay hundred because points? I've I've failed three inch charges <laughs> me too and you guys have watched me do turn, that on the right? channel so like yeah like even seven inch charges are like. Like, yeah, you're taking a risk. Yeah. But, like, auto eight is is really, really good. Like, it takes a lot of guessing out of the game. And, I mean, it's an amazing rule. Amazing rule. Like, just having that, that, just having that number that you can always rely on. That's it, right. It makes, it makes the game so much easier. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, on the other hand, like, fluff-wise, the line is always in the front. Like, that's something that they talk about. Like, they talk about Horace sitting back. The lion doesn't. He's always up there. He doesn't, like... So, I guess may, that's why, maybe. That, that's what they're trying to reflect. He's right? supposed I to mean, be a strategic genius. I guess he always knows if he's going to get in combat. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. Uh, okay, so the uh, lion, uh, lion's collar. So this is this this was already done before. So when he's reduced to two wounds or four wounds or less, he has plus one attack. Uh, two wounds or less, he has plus two attacks. Really good, makes him really dangerous. Um, his I mean, weapon, he, like he doesn't have two attack, two close combat weapons. Yeah, right he, or he pistols. Can so. Generate up to eight attacks though on the charge. On the charge, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's really really good. Uh, absolute focus. So this one again, we've known before. In the assault phase, he's never required to roll the more f the more than four plus to hit enemy models, regardless of enemy weapon skill or any other special rules or modifiers in play. So this kind of really comes into play when you're f fighting against Russ, 
when you're fighting against Magnus um, or Horus with the uh, claw. Yeah. Right. So as Horus fights him, let's say, and brings him down weapon skill and strength, um, he will always hit on fours no matter what. Right. Yeah. So it's it's a big deal. Like that rule is a big deal. But I'm sure you guys all um, all know that. Um, the Deathwing Companions. This one's weird. I'm, I don't like this rule, and I'll tell you why. A unit of Deathwing Companions may be included as part of the same Lord of War choice as Lionel Johnson. If selected, Lionel Johnson must join a unit may not voluntarily leave it. Okay, so under the Deathwing Companions, can you actually have him be part of them? Uh, so it no, says because for Legion Praetor... They're, they're chosen as a, as a retinue. For but it's an HQ. but it says or a legion special character with warlord and legion oh and legion of Stardust dark angel special okay so you can't actually take him as an HQ choice so you have to take him as a lord of war choice yeah. with him well this is a dumb rule because and they, and they would be built into your yeah. your lord of war cost which means that if you want to take them you're pricing yourself out of like certain like you can't play games. a twenty five hundred point game you if, can't play a three thousand point game if you want to take the death wing if you want to take the death wing yeah. right uh, maybe if you run uh, pro max choice. Sure. Right, so then he's an HQ. Yeah, but then somebody could argue that you can't take him because as part of the Lord, same Lord of War choice. So I, I don't know if I would really. I, I don't think anybody would argue with you. Yeah, but it, it's it's just weird. That's getting pretty nitpicky. I I don't I don't like it for that reason because you can't run the Deathwing Companions in a regular game with him. Right, like it just it's weird, right? Um, if that points cost didn't count, but he could take him, I can see it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that was the intention. That you can only do it in large games because it'd be too good, maybe because the Deathwing are really, really good. Yeah. Right. In that sense, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm not a fan of this rule. It's it's weird. Like it makes sense, but it kind of presses him out of majority of the games. So, only if you want to take him. Yeah, if you want to take him. Yeah. Right. I mean, he's got pretty good choices to. to like, he, he does for hang sure. out with uh, otherwise. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, can he still join that unit though? Right. Like a unit of Deathwing. Companions, yeah. Like, like can, with he can still Praetor? join them. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think there's any reason why he couldn't join a like a, a regular Praetor like Corswain with the Deathwing companions and like attach the lion to him. Why not? I don't I don't see a reason why he couldn't. So yeah, it doesn't say they can't join us. So he could still technically deploy with them. Uh, it they just, just wouldn't they just have be to his. be with a Praetor. They just wouldn't be his retinue. Yeah, but. So all, all the bonuses for them... Like, but the bonuses still apply. Any model with the independent character special rule that is with the Death Swarm Companions can't be targeted and they automatically pass look out Surtest. So, I mean, you could still run Causeway, the Deathwing, and the Lion in the, in the big Death Star squad. So, yeah. um, I, I mean, okay. So you just don't use this Deathwing Companion um, rule and you can still run him with them. I mean, I think from what we read, I mean, if we're wrong, please let us know. But I think, I, yeah. I, I think you can. Uh, so Leonine Panoply uh, provides 2 plus armor save and 4 plus mournable save, and the first failed and mournable save made for the line each turn may be re-rolled. So very similar to like Gilliman's armor, except I think Gilliman's armor is every phase. Yeah, it's really good um, every phase, yeah. But... every I mean, every phase is really good. This is still good. Every... It's still great because you're not often, like, as a Primarch, you're not often getting damaged multiple uh, times. Right. Yeah, and you've got a you know you've got a great invulnerable save. So, the first one you fail, you get a yeah. reroll. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this is the thing that I kind of wish they had come up with something maybe a little bit more original with. Yeah. Instead of like, like instead of like a sort of pseudo reprint of Gilliman's armor. Yeah. But. Yeah. Oh, but I I guess I get that they didn't want to give him just like a three plus. Because three plus would basically make him better than all the other Primarchs in close combat, right? Like even Horus wouldn't stand a chance against him if uh, if he had this. I mean, we're definitely going to do this fight. Um, you guys are going to see uh, more Primarch fights, and they're going to be more iconic ones. So there definitely will be Lion versus Horus, um, and Lion versus Russ, because that that's actually something that has happened, right? Um, mm -hmm. But and Ryan versus uh, Lion versus. Uh, the Night Haunter, but I mean, you will see. <laughs> Are we it. gonna waste our time with that one? No, no, no. You'll see it. <laughs> but but yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a good rule. Uh, the Fusil here. So um, his Fusil, Actineus. I can't pronounce that. Eighteen inch range, strength seven, AP two, Salvo two four, Twin Link blind. This is a weird one. He doesn't, he have, doesn't have relentless. relentless. Yeah. 
So if he moves, he's firing two shots at nine inch range. And if he doesn't move, he's firing four shots at 18 inch range. I mean, okay. Like it's kind of weird. Um, but what, whatever, I guess. Right. Uh, right. It's, it's a little weird. If he shoots that before charge, like can he charge? Yeah. Why not? Salvo weapon. Oh, I don't know. Is this something that I need to look up now? Maybe. Yeah. But let me Cause he doesn't have relentless. Yeah. Weapon types, right? Yeah. Where would that be? Cause he doesn't have relentless. You're right. So what do salvo weapons do? So he's just like, and, and he's within like nine inches. You're like, <laughs> that's a very good point. I never even thought about that. You you get that close and you're going to want to probably charge with him. Well, you, yeah. Especially with the point of the sphere is spear, right? Rule point of the blade. Yeah. Point of the blade. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, I, I can't seem to find it. I'm going to look at the, okay. You look and I'll, yeah, you, you read the next one. I'll talk about stasis grenades. Stasis grenades. Oh, favorite, my favorite weapon. Now. Yeah. Weapon. I, uh, yeah, it is a weapon. Oh, these rare techno relics count as neither assault nor defensive grenades, but have their own unique effect. Uh, during a turn in which a unit equipped with stasis grenades makes a successful charge or themselves are successfully charged, the enemy units reduce their initiative to one until the end of the game turn. So again, it's, it has that weird wording where it says full game turn, not uh, not to like the net control you know, player's next turn or, or player turn. It's that game turn, so a little strange there but just flat out like in combat he charges gets charged no matter what his opponent initiative one. one yeah yeah so imagine so think about it like this if the dark angels go first and he charges that's two rounds of combat that whoever he's fighting is initiative one yeah the entire unit he's fighting is initiative one yeah say you, or say you messed up real bad and somehow didn't charge with the lion right with his guaranteed you know eight, eight inch charge, charge sure didn't charge you messed up real bad you get charged still initial one you're still initial one yeah yeah this kills me because i play emperor's children <laughs> and like the entire legion is based around <coughs> charging units and like lining up your so, charges so like you're and, like you're, i could do everything right yeah. and then still charge this guy and he'd be like i strike first and you would lose that fight i would lose because him. like Fulgrim has to challenge, and you have Palatine Blades with him. Sure. So Fulgrim has to challenge, and I accept with somebody else. Yep. And then you and just then the murder lion my murders the Terminators, and yeah. your Terminators aren't AP2. They are when they charge. But they won't be, because the lion will kill your 5 plus invulnerable Terminators. Yeah. And then, yeah, Fulgrim will do really well against whoever, whoever. he's fighting. He might kill a bunch. But then you're outnumbered, most likely, and yep. the lion has an advantage and you're still yeah. initiative one next turn potentially depending on what turn yeah. it is right and yeah and the other weird part is I, I know you mentioned it but like it's for a whole game turn so like it applies like if you are top of the you know if you go first and you charge then you get a two turns two player turns yeah but or if he's going first and he charges then you get a two player turns but then if you're bottom of the turn then you only get it one player turn so that's kind of weird i feel like they should have either made it like one player turn or until the start of your next turn yeah depending on how they intended it so well, honestly i don't think this thing should exist at all it's it's my, amazing my personal like it's opinion. such a weird little thing like stasis grenades oh great but they're amazing I think, and then if you run the dreadwing i think this would have been great if it was minus one initiative so but like to just be initiative one flat initiative but then you're one. running dreadwing two and if you have like the Dreadwing special rule, you can buy it for 30 points. Yeah. All models in the unit are equipped with this. Yeah. The other thing too that works here is it doesn't say you aren't, you can't be part of a combat. So I could charge you, you could counter charge me with another unit and still be initiative one. Yeah. Like it's amazing. Yeah. It's just it's anytime an you get charged. amazing rule. Or so, charge. So I can see why you would hate it because it's I, definitely like, it's a... And again, this is something like, this is so good and I don't see it in that point cost it is so good it's like one of those little things where you're like oh is it that good it's just grenades but like no you're amazing. fighting against initiative one yeah there's only one primark that'll strike before him and that's Khan. yeah and that's because he has his special, special rule. rule that's it yeah like it's it's amazing amazing rule uh lion so so here's the two swords so you've got the lion sword and the wolf blade and everybody like i know people online are like split as to what to use so the lion sword is strength is user ap1 Melee, Lance, Flashbane, Mastercrafted, two-handed. 
Flushbane, always wound on two plus. Amazing. Yeah. Master Crafted, uh, amazing because you reroll your always either three plus or four plus to hit. And he's okay? like he's a uh, Master of the Blade too, right? Like I'm pretty sure. Does he get that special rule? No, no, because that's only that's Legion of Stardust. Yeah, that's okay. right. So he doesn't get that special rule. Um, <laughs> and then so there's a couple of things with this. AP one leads me to believe it's a weapon that should be used against vehicles as well. And it has lance. It does. It but mean, its strength is user. Which is seven. And then seven. So if you're fighting Lance, that's 12. So your AP1 will only apply if you pen on a six. Yeah, but you can always pen on a six. Yeah, I know, but it's just weird. It, it's it's weird. Yeah. It really is. It's awesome. Yeah, AP1 kind of suggests that it should be used more as like going after armor. Vehicles, yeah. But Fleshbane kind of suggests the opposite where yeah. you want to kill. So it's kind of weird. You being challenged in that with sense. this weapon, right? And Master Crafted too, right? That reroll right. that you get for, you know. Yeah. Okay, so the Wolf Blade is plus three strength, make him strength 10, AP2. So, he, so melee two-handed shred and fearsome ruin. So fearsome ruin is... If a unit suffers one or more casualties, uh, it makes a morale check during the assault phase. They must roll an additional d6 and keep the two highest. So this is really good. But a lot of times, units that aren't fearless will not even get a chance to use this Always. because he's going to, like, yeah. kill five guys, most likely, yeah. or four, and, like, do a lot of damage. Yeah. Right? Um, Shred is a unreal. So he's effectively strength 10. Um, he's one of the few Primarchs. And, like, Vulcan is one of them that has a strength 10 weapon that's not, like, times 2 strength that's not unwieldy, right? Like, yeah. very few Primarchs have that ability, and he's one of them. I think yeah. I think it's only the two now that I think about you it. You know what the difference between Vulcan and <coughs> Lionel Johnson is? Vulcan's got four attacks at initiative five. And, and This guy has potentially eight attacks at initiative char- seven. Yeah, yeah, and he can get extra attacks, right? So... He's really good. Uh, I mean, Shred is unreal, right? Like, reroll to wound, so it's most likely 2+. plus, Unless you're fighting... There's some demons is that are any... toughness 9? Is, yeah, maybe is the like one demon? Game, game term 1 and 2, de- some demons might be toughness yeah, 9. Yeah, I think there's maybe one demon that's... The, the big guy is toughness 9, but that's it, right? So, you're always wounding on 2s, re-rolling. I mean, so so a lot of people, like, flip-flop between, between these two weapons. Like, the Wolf Blade, technically, because it's strength 10... Is better against vehicles because you're going to pen a lot more. So you don't have the AP one to get the easier explosions. That's right. But but you're going to no pen. matter how you math like, it out. Like even fourteen armor, like you're penning on a five or six. You get more right? penetrations. Thirteen against, armor against armor. Twelve, thirteen, <coughs> like fourteen. The knights get. in the front if you're fighting, like you get that pen right. So um, it's definitely like which weapon would you guys take? Right? Like like tell me actually put comments that I want to know which weapon you guys would be interested in because. I, I don't know. I don't know which weapon I would choose. For me, like, they both have their merits. But for me, the general one that will be of better use for, like, a take-all-comers list that you'd want to use all the time is the Wolf Blade. Okay. But on the other hand, Flushbane... Well, I guess Flushbane doesn't... Mastercrafted is good because then you reroll that one. You do get a miss, reroll with right? Mastercraft. And yeah, I get Strength 10 is good and Shred is good, but you're still, with Flushbane, you're still wounding everybody on twos. So do you really need that reroll? I guess it does help. We've all had those. Yeah, I guess. Wounds, yes. Right? Where yes. you're like, you know, oh, I got three, three hits. ones. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, so, so here's the thing, though. Here's the one thing that I don't like. Um, if they're both the same point. And I mean, one, some people could argue that one is better than the other and should have a point value, but they don't. So right now, when do you actually choose to use this? Because it doesn't, usually when something has a point value, you do it at the time that you're building the army because you have to pay. So for example, Fulgrim can upgrade to that Paragon Blade or whatever. Yeah, Fire right? Blade. Fire Blade. And so, so if you pay for it, that's what you're using, Right. On the other hand... Well, you don't pay for that. There's no points cost on that weapon either. But it does give you an option for it to choose, and it has a point value of free, right? Or does it say the same thing? It, it doesn't say a oh, point Oh, okay, value. so it's the if, same thing. If they added it in later, it's like an it's an, it's an an italics, <laughs> like under an asterisk. It's like, there's no points cost associated. <laughs> okay, to it. okay. I mean, the only time that it <laughs> will matter, because like if you're playing just for fun, whatever, mm-hmm. then... You, 
whatever. swap whatever weapon yeah. you want. Yeah. The only time it'll matter is when you're taking it to an event. Yeah. And I think... So what, what do you do? Because I know... Just like... because it's not... It doesn't say specifically in here when you're supposed to choose it. I think you would say, while you're building your list, you pick you're one You're supposed to pick one? And, it'll, okay. and the event would probably have <laughs> the regulations on yeah. whether or not... And I mean, I'm thinking... They, you know, they're probably going to say... You can't flip between these two weapons between your games. Because I think Sanguinous specifically says that you can choose at the start of the battle. Sanguinous right? might have might have wording, and it, right. it could does. have been it could have been good to just include some similar wording like that. Yeah, or say one or the other, right? So I, I think that's. Something... But again, also like I mean, you're gonna model him with with what? Are you gonna magnetize it? It's pretty easy. Like I have the model. I was looking at it. It's not that hard to magnetize the two different weapons. They fit quite snugly in there. So. Um, I don't know if you guys know, if you didn't watch my previous video, he actually, the lion has some slippage on his legs. So I've contacted, I know, and I've talked to other people that have him and theirs are perfect. So it's definitely a miscast. So I have contacted Forge World. Um, they haven't replied back cause they're, uh, they messaged me saying that they're really busy and that they'll reply back. So they haven't gotten back to me yet, but I'm expecting that I'll get a replacement legs for him. But unfortunately that's going to probably take another couple of weeks. I was really looking forward to him to actually getting him built but um, and painted, but that's not going to happen yet for a little while because I just, I can't, I don't want to spend the time to make him look perfect when, you know, the model should be perfect with not only how much we pay for, but, you know, I know other, other people have gotten the models really good. So um, unfortunately you guys won't see that for a little while, but once I do start building him and painting him, you will, I, I will show him because he's just, he's honestly for me, for me, He's one of my favorite Primarchs. Like, he definitely looks what I envisioned the Lion would look like. Um, I think there's a few other Primarchs, like Sanguinous is really nice, too. Um, there's definitely other Primarchs that are really good, but I really like the Lion. Um, I really, really do. As for his rules, um, he's a beast in combat. Yeah. And he's supposed to be. Like, they do talk about that. I think he's maybe a little too good. Um, unfortunately for me, what I don't like... Is I don't like he is supposed to rival Horus in tactical genius, and the only reason he wasn't chosen over Horus is because Horus is charismatic. He thinks of everybody, not just the end. Where Lion is more about the end justifies the means. Horus definitely isn't like that. That's why the Lion was never chosen or never would have been chosen as the War Master. Um, one of the reasons, at least. I mean, tell tell me if you're wrong. If I'm wrong. Um, but I feel like he should have maybe less abilities that make him a beast in close combat and more abilities that make him a tactical genius. Um, and then I think he should be more points. I was expecting him to be like 490, 480, I think, not 85, 490. That's what I was kind of expecting. I, I think that he should be <laughs> up there nearing 500 points. Like personally for me, with everything that he's got, honestly, even without everything that he's got, not knowing... Um, the point of the blade special rule and the stasis grenades. I think that he probably should have been 480 points. I think the wolf blades, a better weapon of the two choices. I think it should have a points cost attached to it somewhere around like 15 points, put them up at 495. <laughs> That's my opinion. You know, with this extra stuff that he, that he's got like auto eight inch charge and, and stupid stasis grenades. grenades. <laughs> he's really good. Like at 460 points, this guy is just an absolute steal of a deal for a prop. Absolutely. And I mean, again, the only downside is you have to get him in combat. Like you need right. him in there to pay for himself. And and he will. Like you he know, will when he gets there. is kind of you have to do that. Well, uh, Alpharius, <laughs> that's fair. I yeah. run Alpharius and I mean, I only get into combat when I need to. And usually if I'm getting into combat, I'm trying to make sure that I'm already guaranteed a win because yeah. that that's how I play my game because he's the weakest primer. Right? Yeah, absolutely. he is the weakest Primarch. Yeah, minus but his, Volgar but the, on like the, the utility rules that he has, But he has yeah. like preferred enemies, Unreal, yeah. like and all the other abilities that he gets. But yeah, Lionel Johnson. I mean, other than Magnus and Horus, maybe Logar. Like, can Logar beat him with um, lots of um, with like rerolling and stuff like that? I haven't really uh, thought about I Logar. I don't really think so. I, I don't think so either. I think really like Horus can, but I think he's pretty on par with Horus. Yeah. Um, and I think Magnus can, but Magnus can beat everybody because he's just a, a, a beast, period. Zoom up with biomancy powers. <laughs> That's right. Um, but I mean, um, like really, 
the lion is is a beast and he's definitely one of the best if not he's one of the best prime action close combat just for his points cost he might be the best prime <laughs> you oh, that's fair that's fair point right. point for point he might actually be the best like if you play it out 500 times he might win more than 460 then horse will win 500 or whatever a thousand times or whatever you want to play it right? right so um we haven't done the math hammer on it yet i'm sure somebody out there has and uh, I don't actually know if he beats Horace or not. Like, it would be a close fight. I think the only the only way I think Horace would get an advantage is the strength reductions with a claw. I think you're going to run out of wounds before you run out of strength with... <clears throat> with, uh, with, with the wolf blade, I guess. Well, Johnson. actually, if you're using the Fleshbane weapon, it doesn't matter. It's always 2+. plus. Right. So then the strength and the weapon skill thing don't make a difference. If you're using the wolf blade strength 10, you'd have to lower it three times and then he still has shred so i mean that's uh that's good i think horus the only reason why he might win is the three plus invulnerable save um and he would end up hitting him on threes at some point right but i think it would be a very close fight because if horus is hitting with the claw he doesn't get um he doesn't get master crafted um but he does get shred um yeah, it's definitely a, it's definitely a tough fight for any of the Primarchs. So, um, amazing Primarch, definitely worth the points. I think uh, will be a blast to play against. I mean, he can go toe to toe with most Death Stars out there. Um, so, uh, I think you'll most see him with Death Stars. I mean, the unit of the Deathwing companions with like Causeway and him in a Spartan. I mean, unless you're playing against Mechanicum who are just going to haywire you, excuse me, your Spartan to death and then just shoot you off the board with all their AP2 weaponry. Like, when you get somewhere, you know, you're going to do a lot of damage. So, mm -hmm. it's definitely... Um, I, I don't like the fact that I think about him as a Death Star Primarch, right? But it seems like that's how he's meant to be played. For sure. Right? That's how they've designed him. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. unfortunately, but... I mean, he is amazing. And we did look, you're right, salvo weapons, if you fire them, can't charge. Yeah. So it's, like it's really one, weird. He's, he's like probably he, never going to shoot his weapon's gun. completely useless. It's a pretty good gun, too. Like, unless I'm, like, not reading something, but he doesn't yeah. have anything that gives him relentless or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah two, salvo 2-4. Two, like, what a dumb weapon. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just doesn't make sense. So I, I feel like that's actually an overlook. Probably I, I feel like that's a mistake. Yeah. Like, they meant to make it, like, two, four shots, but Salvo actually hurts him. So, yeah. it doesn't doesn't make any any sense at all. Because um, his weapon, or his uh, his armor doesn't give him anything that allows him to do that. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thanks, guys, for joining us for the Dark Angels. Next will be the Night Lords. Um, and then that will, be, that will be coming up right away as well. Um... Put, put down comments of what you think. Uh, put down comments of what you want to hear next. Uh, let us know what we got wrong and what we got right. Um, if you message in there and we did get something wrong or you want something mentioned, I'll mention it in the next podcast for sure in the next video. So thanks for joining me and Theo here. And you guys have a great day.